It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. What a panel. Stacy Higginbotham is here. Sherilyn Lowe from Engadget. And the return of Father Robert Balasser, the digital Jesuit. They're all just back from CES, our CES Roundup, next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit This Week in Tech, episode 701, recorded Sunday, January 13th, 2019. Safe bladder space. This Week in Tech is brought to you by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality. Launch your website at wordpress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month, and you'll get 15% off any new plan at wordpress.com. twit And by stamps.com. Buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to stamps.com, click on the microphone, and enter twit. And by FreshBooks, the ridiculously easy-to-use cloud accounting software, helping small business owners thrive. Try it free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash twit. And by IT Pro TV. Start your new career in IT or level up with flexible IT training from IT Pro TV. Visit go.itpro.tv slash twit to take advantage of their biggest sale yet. Standard memberships, just $29 a month. And for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription, use the code twit30 at checkout. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the week's tech news, and it has been a busy week because of CES. So we have brought here CEF, CES refugees. I didn't get to go, but good news. Stacey Higginbotham did. She's covering IoT for Stacey on IoT.com, of course, a regular on This Week in Google. Hi, Stacey. Hello, everyone. Back or should in, I say hola? Hola. Back in uh, Austin. Yes. We're coming your way, you know, for uh, South by. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm I might excited. be decamping. Don't go camping. Okay, fine. <laughs> you can have my studio. <laughs> well, maybe we'll borrow it. Yeah, that might be nice. Also with us, and we're glad to have her, Sherilyn Lowe. She is reviews editor at Engadget. I know Engadget has a big presence at CES. How many people did you send down there? I, I lost count, uh, but I think we're about 30 to 40, wow. maybe. Wow. Do you still Including have your own video. trailer and all that stuff, or did they did they still do that? We did, yeah. We had our trailer on the lot. We had our wow. stage on the show floor in Central Hall. Uh, it's it's fun times. Yeah. Great to have you, Sherilyn. And Thank you. And look who's here for my sins. Father Robert Balasser, the digital Jesuit. He's been in Rome, but you got what you get a dispensation to go to CES. I every got year? furloughed. I think it's furloughed. furloughed from my job in Rome. No, I, I, that was that was the deal. So when we were negotiating me going over there, uh, I said, "Well, I would like to continue my work in technology. If I come and accept this assignment, will you promise me I can do four events a year?" And so this was number one. Number one. And what are this the other events? You said uh, definitely Def Con and Black Hat. Uh, Def Con Black Hat. That's right. uh, that's number two. Then maybe IFA. Uh, maybe NAB. IFA is closer. It's in Barcelona. Yeah, IFA is closer. Ifa. Mobile World Congress. It's too close to uh, to oh. CES. Is IFA? No, IFA's in Berlin. Mobile IFA's World in Congress. Berlin. Mobile IFA's Barcelona. in Berlin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, and then I'm gonna sort of save the fourth one, just for wait. Whatever. I didn't know you get to negotiate these things. I just thought they told you where to go and you go. Normally, yes, but they've been trying okay. to get me there for a few years, so that they he had some bargaining. I chips. had a little. Bit of marketing. Problem. He also has some go huh. some gadgets. I have gadgets. Let's, uh, but let's start with then gadgets yeah. list of uh, nominees for the best of CES. Sherilyn, you were involved in this, I'm sure, right? Yeah, uh, the whole team actually was involved. Um, you know, each editor was assigned one or two categories to kind of uh, manage, and then we all got together um, around the second or the third night of the show to all talk about our nominees and why we think they're worth the nomination. And then the next night, everyone votes uh, on which should win win each category. So it's it's tough. It's exhaustive. We start working on this month, a month in advance at least, and uh, the, these are our finalists. These are these are what we think was the best of the show. Have you announced the winners yet? We have, yeah. We we did on Thursday evening, uh, on the I think third day of the show. I lose track, but uh, yeah, the winner, uh, best of best, is was the Impossible Burger 2.0. Oh my God! Not a tech product of any kind. <laughs> 
it surprised everybody, but I think it has, I, my personal take on it is that I, I like that it's a unique uh, thing to win a Best of CES award. We've never awarded it to a non-gadget, but in addition to that, I think it has a lot of implications, not just for non-meat eaters, but just for the fact that we are, you know, it's something that can help our environment overall, right? Reduce the over, I don't know, waste of food or eating too much meat. There's a lot of um, uh, environmental positives this has. And that's something that I think as an industry, we could think to do a lot more of. So I think it's a unique choice. And I think it's, it's not, I mean, it's a controversial choice. Let's be real. I don't think everyone on the team voted for it, but it was the most popular option. And that's how it won best of best. So how was it? <laughs> we should explain the Impossible Burger is a yes. hamburger that tastes and looks like it, it's meat, but it's not. It's a, what is it? It's a soy-based uh, protein, soy-based protein um, patty, right? I think the first time it came out, it was able to replicate the so-called blood that you would expect from a meat patty. And uh, the initial Impossible Burger patty that people have tried for a while now uh, was wheat-based. And so this year, the, oh. the new one is based on soy, and it has more of a texture, a chewy texture to it that is that helps make it taste more like meat. Uh, I personally didn't try it because I'm like, whoa, that is not my cup of tea. I want, <laughs> yeah, I want real meat. But uh, but the the people who tried it from our team thought it was really good, actually, and that it tasted a lot more like beef than the original. Uh, yo, here, now, is it I, easier I, to I, cook? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, well, no, that's no. a big issue. So the Impossible Burger right now, your quality, if you go buy it, it's all over the map. Because mm. the, right now they sell it only in restaurants. White right. Castle and has it. Yeah, so you can. I've had a really delicious Impossible Burger, and I've had a really terrible oh, Impossible Burger. And so I was curious if this one's a little easier to cook without like. It's easier to it cook than much. the wheat products because soy is so much more flexible as a protein than than any okay. wheat product can be. But I, for me, the thing is. Why are we doing this? I mean, you're never going to convince someone who is, I have oh, to eat no, meat. no, no, we must do this. No, 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 I mean, I understand. We have to do this. I, no, I, I believe in it. I believe that a product like this is very important. I'm actually with Engadget on that. I'm just saying, why do we have to make every product like this almost meat? No, it's, it's I, food. I understand. It's just food. If it's you're a vegetarian, you should eat vegetables. But <laughs> if we're going to, what we need to do is get the world off of eating meat. It's not yeah. an economical food product if you do it if you do it right it's actually a really compelling meat burger like substance you can do substance. great stuff with soy the presumption is if people are going to stop eating meat not just people who have declared themselves right. vegetarians but if we can wean people off of meat we're going to have to make something that is like that is indistinguishable for meat that they'll be happy right. with but do, do we i mean or is yes. it or is it yes. just that yes, one generation do. that still remembers so what think, meat tastes like right. that's going to want it <laughs> well, and maybe, after that they're like yeah it's why just would a I transitional want it? burger I, I tell you what, to so, your point. Go ahead, Sean. Uh, yeah, to your point, I think that for for someone like me who's in the middle, who could see myself switching over to this meatless substitute someday, getting it as close to real meat as possible is is key. Because the reason I don't switch over to being a full vegetarian is because of the taste of a lot of things. And I've been able to integrate more vegetables into my diet because some of them have been prepared so well. So it's I think the audience isn't the one that's fully vegetarian or the one that's firmly into their barbecue that wants to eat meat their whole lives. You're talking about the segment that's maybe open to it and could switch over. And that's a huge segment too. I've effectively switched over to being vegetarian because all we have in Italy is pasta. Spaghetti. <laughs> Seriously, it's everything. Do they pasta give you meat sauce? Everything. No, it's just pasta. It's you pasta mean, with beans or pasta with rice or pasta with pasta. Ugh. It's like living at a, what it, what's that, Olive Garden. <laughs> oh, well. He lives in Olive Garden pastas. with some nice paintings. <laughs> you would see, exactly. There you go. It's some gilded paintings. Yeah. Which, I would but, say, so... If you think about the cost differential, so if you yeah. can get Impossible Burgers to be eventually cheaper than meat, right? Because we're trying to promote people eating it, or maybe it becomes cheaper as the cost of meat rises to reflect its environmental costs. Then you might have something where you're like, oh, a meat burger is a special occasion and the rest of the time you have this. And it's nice to have that as an option that's still familiar. Yeah, I mean, the Beef Maybe Council will optimistic. tell you, oh, no, you know, it's a myth that beef tastes uh, 4,000 gallons of water per pound and stuff Oh, my like gosh. That. I live in Texas. The Beef Council's <laughs> right outside my door. <laughs> but it's There's clear. a cow grazing on my lawn. It's, it, I mean, <laughs> the simple fact of it is eating 
lower on the food chain, yeah. is healthier because you're not concentrating toxins, is better for the environment because it takes less energy, uh, less water, less of everything to make. It's it, So it's healthier for you. It's better for the environment. The only But the problem is meat is seen as so, as something you can eat because you're affluent. Well, and, and I think that, that really we have... In order to save the planet, among the many things we have to do, we have to stop eating meat. I think. The, there's a missing element here, though. Y yes, meat is energy intensive, but the main energy costs, and I'm talking now in Transportation. general. It's, yeah, it's the logistical yeah. chain. It's, it's the fact that nothing is sourced locally. So for me to have that burger, it's not just that, yes, that, that cow had to be raised and grazed and processed, but now it, it was probably transported a couple of thousand miles, processed at three or four different locations before it got to yeah. my Big Mac box. So that's another problem. Right. And that, so that's, that's the same Texas problem if it's meat yeah, or, you or get, soy. Stacy just goes at her door, kills a cow, brings it in, and she's <laughs> yeah. got dinner. I'm done. We have a lot of cows here, in the too. Kitchen. Yeah. And, and that is the other side of it. People say yeah. eat local, right, as much as you can eat sustainably and eat local. Uh, I just, I think that this, it's an interesting thing. The other reason there's, the Impossible Burger exists, it's going to be a moneymaker, yeah, right? Exactly. Uh, I think five years ago to make, uh, uh, I remember Sergey Brin eating the first fake hamburger. It was a $6,000 hamburger. But it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> so we, but but, in, it but, it, but the investment is to bring the price down and make it more palatable, more acceptable, but also easier to distribute, easier to cook, and and I think a lot of investors, Elon Musk's brother is big on this, think that the next wave of big unicorns is going to be food, food companies. Well, specifically, he likes growing inside of cities, right? Yeah, urban I mean, farming. Yeah, that, that was his thing. His square roots, uh, and they love this idea of of taking old shipping containers and outfitting them with right. high density grow capacity, dropping them into the middle of an urban area and say, that's your food, your food source. So I that's actually difficult. So super, the problem yeah. with, so, well, and it's also, those are so expensive right now. You can only grow high value crops mm -hmm. and you can also only grow certain types of crops that don't grow vertically Precisely. or sorry, that do grow vertically, vertically. Yeah. <laughs> Vertically. So you can grow, grow lettuces, but you can't grow things like, I don't think you can grow strawberries. You can't grow wheat products or grasses or grains yet. Or soy. You can't do soy. soy or soy, right. Can you do beets? Uh, beets? I mean, mm, no. Cause I don't good. think so. You good. need That's something that grows straight As long up. as you can't do beets, I'm all for it. Right. Beets are delicious. Hey, beets, <laughs> don't beets contribute to the heme that's part of beets are very good for the Impossible heme. Burger? That's right. No. The heme is, their, is the, God, I even it's disgusting even to talk about it, but it's the blood... <laughs> product that they use to simulate the juicy See, okay, blood that's the, the part of it that I'm like, wait, why do why that? Do Don't do, that? do it. Because we're all vampires. Because people, because when you look at a picture of a burger, Juice. I mean, they, imagine if it were well done, you'd be like, Ugh. Too dry, right? So, Sherilyn, I am proud of Engadget and proud of you for choosing <laughs> as the best of CES a m fake meat product. I mean, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's That's bold. It at least sparked a, a lively conversation here on the show, didn't it, huh? Now, my um, question is, is that yeah. because all the other stuff was crap? I don't I don't think it was crap. I think it was hard to choose. Um, oh, it was all I so it, good. I wouldn't say it was all good. <laughs> uh. it's, I, I, I say this every year, and you, can, you guys can shout me down. And maybe it's just me justifying the fact that I don't go to CES anymore. It looked like... There wasn't a lot of interesting stuff at CES. I week. think year after year, we're running into the issue of so much news is coming out of CES. It's very hard for the for right. anything to break through the noise. And so it sounds like it's all noise. Um, but, it, you know, when something breaks through, like, you know, rollable TV finally shipping to, to yeah. the public. But, but that's, that's a perfect sort of example. And you gave that your best TV product. This is the uh, LG uh, rollable TV. Devendra loved it. But we saw it last year, right? So. Right. The only news here is they think maybe they'll be able to get it out by the end of the year. No, year. no. The news was that LG at their booth had the the melted display rolling <laughs> cave thing of screens. To me, this is what's Good wrong God, with CES. Was... There's no, it's not, I mean, that's not innovative. We had it a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with the luggage that follows you around the airport. How it, many times are we going to see that before it... It, it I depends mean, on where you spend your CES. If if you spent all your time at LVCC, I absolutely agree with you. Because it's the, big, the same the vendors big just revving the same products that you right. saw the last year. Go to the Sands. Spend at least a day. I spent three days at the Sands. At the, the Sands. Up, yeah, yeah, and down in the Rika Park. Because there, there's weird stuff that maybe so the first true. time you pass by, you, you'll laugh at it and you go... 
that could be a product category. Uh, and, and you know I, what? There was, yeah. was, there was so, so many. No, I was, I was thinking about the sense that I was surprised at how much not necessarily sleep tech, but how many eye masks oh, God, that yes. train. <laughs> I could not believe how many of those there were. What, are, was, what kind of eye masks? Like Lisa has some that have eyelashes on them like that. No, 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 no. Like that, that have also, like light pulses that train you to be like either less exhausted oh, or jet lag or oh. like they do a, a lot. My so, favorite was the one that are, shot lasers into your eyelids. I'm like, this is I don't for think treatment I want that. of of seasonal affect disorder. It, it, every, it's supposed it, to help you sleep it, better. It's supposed to reset your yeah. clock. I mean, you you pick pick your it's eye magic. mask. Yeah, this is this is what I knew would happen when they started talking about blue light from screens. I, it was inevitable that we go down that rabbit hole. So we would counteract it with a different gadget. Yeah. Oh, a blue light a problem. Well, how about some red light in your so, eyeballs? I want to say that I think, uh, you know, I was looking at the Engadget stuff. I actually loved all of the things that y'all picked as your unexpected products were actually the ones that I thought were the most fun of CES. Oh, so I was kind of excited to see that. Oh, good. Um, I, I'm actually wearing one of them right now. This is one of Are you wearing the bladder thing? I am. <laughs> oh! Wait a minute. She called it. How did you hey. know and how did you? Why? Okay. So, uh, Carson, Show if, us this if you go over, over overhead right now, uh, y'all, the, the Twit audience can see that my, currently my bladder so is 30% full. There's, so there's an app for that. There's an app for that. It's a, uh, a small ultrasonic transducer that's currently sitting on my abdomen, and it's actually measuring the fullness how? of my bladder, and it does you it have in real to, time. So you have to wear a belt. Uh, no, it's actually just taped. It's medical taped to okay. my abdomen. Now, they came up with, this is a company called D-Free, uh, and, which stands for Diaper Free. And they originally created this technology for like nursing homes and hospitals where the only other alternative are diapers or catheters. So there are people, particularly of a certain age, which I'm rapidly yes, getting to, yes. who can't tell can't that they tell. need to go. You lose that ability. So uh, they have to wear diapers because they, they, they just can't control it. Uh, so it's not merely incontinence. They have no sense of Precisely. that they have to go. So this would help them. It, would, it gives you a notification. It, yeah, so go you set, you know, like, like I have mine set so that when it hits nine, uh, I should actually lower it to seven or so. Uh, oh, it, my gosh. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, so, yeah, when it hits a certain threshold, it will it'll ping your phone and say, hey, your, your bladder's filling up. Like, how, but it, how accurate is this? It's super accurate. I, so put this on children when they're being potty trained. Uh, Do you no, know how yes, awesome I know, right? that would be? Exactly. Like, when you're sitting there and like three years old and they're like, I have to go. And you're like, can you wait so, for five minutes? They're like, no. This is not good because you're going to train children that they don't know when it's time to pee <laughs> unless they have a smartphone and a belt. I'm telling you, as a parent who tried to leave the house during the year that yeah, we were, no, maybe it wasn't that long. I know what you mean, but, though. Yeah. No. There I mean, will, there'll it, be accidents. Th this is this is what I call this is second wave health tech. So first wave mm -hmm. health tech was important because it got us into this idea that we can wear things. Things like the Fitbit. The Fitbit or the Apple Watch. Yeah. That's it's cool, but it's information looking for a problem to solve. This started as a problem to solve, then they figured out what information do we need to solve it and how do we get that information? And they came up with a product that's actually pretty good. I mean, again, the first time I saw the PR pitch for this, I disregarded it because it sounded silly. I didn't want anything and to do now, with the continent stack. He's wearing one. I'm wearing one. <laughs> <laughs> and this was a best of CES in the digital health and fitness category. Yeah. Um, the triple W D free. The D is it available free. for sale now? It is. It's the only caveat with everything we're going to talk about is a lot of the stuff you see at CES Correct. is not available now. In fact, some of it will never be available. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Especially with the sands area that you're talking about, Father yeah. Robert. But you are right that the most interesting stuff is out there. Um, the D free itself, uh, I think they're not pitching it for for kids, unfortunately, Stacy. Yeah. But um, really, I think it has a lot for caregivers, nurses, like like you guys have mentioned already. And you know, it also fell under at least on the short list of our most impactful, most unexpected categories. It might not have made the final list of nominees, but we definitely talked a lot about it. Uh, it's it's. It's fun, you know, to see what the entire team has looked at at the whole show and things that we go into the show expecting to be complete crap actually end up being surprisingly thoughtful yeah. and useful. Yeah. Um, it's, so then it comes and becomes really hard to pick one because then we all start fighting in the trailer. Honestly, there's like every year there's a big fight and we all brace ourselves for it. But but everyone has their own opinion on what's going to be the most impactful. So I think Samsung's, uh, you know, 
robo brace thing that can help people walk was the final winner in, this in is the what, this is what I thought Father Robert would be wearing in the studio <laughs> the this is the gate enhancing motivational system or and my gems. gate's just fine thank you very much now this is a concept though this is not a product yet right yeah yeah, it's also harder. Well, one of the criteria we look at too is also like um, you know market appeal and whether or not it's it's realistically going to come to the market. There's a lot of criteria we have to consider. So people fight over also which ones are more important criteria. And I think that because this is uh, Samsung and because of the the potential to help people here, this has a slight edge over the others because if Samsung really wants to make this happen and maybe focus on a niche market like hospitals for a while, they they could easily do it. Um, whereas for a startup that may have brought this same thing as a concept to CES, then it's less likely to us to become a reality unless they find a buyer at CES itself. Right. So. There's just a lot of things that go into our, our discussions. I won't bore you with all of it, but this is our Liz. I am quite proud of it. Uh, yeah, take a look. There's so much. I think it's interesting yeah. that so much accessibility and health tech is in here. That's that's clearly the focus. Is that one of the trends you saw at CES? I think every year in the past few years, um, we've seen that increase. Uh, accessibility accessibility tech is a new product category for the best of awards if i'm not wrong if not last year then this year um and in the digital health category there's a lot of overlap with wearables and so because i was overseeing the wearables category this year i made a conscious effort to kind of leave out anything that that is too just on the nose as wearable you know there are a couple of smartwatches that that were also announced at CES, but as a team and me and my uh, other editors, we decided that the more impactful, the more meaningful stuff should be should get more uh, um, recognition. So maybe from our list, it does look like there's a lot of digital health stuff that comes up because I think to us that just seemed like the more important it's tech more important. that we wanted yeah. to yeah, that we wanted yeah. to focus on. Well, and I think also now that we baby boomers are aging uh there's there, there's a big market for stuff like well this, there's also right? the fda changed their rules last year to make it easier to mm -hmm. get approval for things and then to update and handle software updates in a way that doesn't feel scary to vendors okay okay so it's i think little, it's a little gray though the fda thing because it's, it's a little unclear uh when when it you is, have an F stacy go ahead it is still, no no i was like it is still unclear but they did make what they did do is they made clear that you can release a product and update the software without it kind of needing new approvals. They also established a cybersecurity program that's really interesting and kind of provided some real guidance about what they're looking for in products, whereas before they were like, uh, make it secure, you guys. Well, so now as they... A, as an example, the ECG, the electrocardiogram in the Apple Watch wouldn't be available if it weren't for a new category of FDA mm -hmm. products, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's say you don't have to have what proof that they're safe and effective. I don't know what what don't you have to no. have. It's exper <laughs> more experimental stuff. It's oh, don't make me it's, remember. It's like six months ago. I'm like, what are the words? Don't make me remember. Says Stacey. well, it's, it's things like this. You know, the, again, uh, these we are hearing aids. Mike so in the, the FDA, chat room, yeah. In the FDA uh, uh, funding bill from 2017. One of the things, and by the way, kudos to Elizabeth Warren, who did a nonpartisan effort and did not make a big deal about this to get this into the funding bill, was a requirement that the FDA allow over-the-counter hearing aids by uh, 2020. They have to uh, have a request for comment, and then uh, there's a comment period, August 2020. But at some point, you'll be able to buy <gasps> hearing aids over-the-counter. And wow. as somebody who uses hearing aids, that's a huge deal. Hearing aids... You go to an audiologist, which I think you should still do, but anyway, you go to an audiologist, you get tested, you get the hearing aids. My instruments from Starkey cost $6,000. And in an often case, people don't have insurance to pay for that. Right. So that's prohibitively expensive. So the idea that maybe there's a market of hearables, uh, <laughs> over-the-counter hearables, that you don't, you don't go to a professional, you do a software test, you do a phone test... My uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy phones have a, actually a pretty good hearing test built in, and that gives you a curve. Then when you listen to your, your music on your Samsung, it sounds better. That's really good. It's probably better than the hearing aid test I got. So, Robert, you brought something from a company called... Eargo. So E-A-R-G-O. E right. These are their top mm -hmm. of the line. They just launched them at CES. They're completely in-ear, so you don't actually see these. Uh, it's it's not one of those ear hearing aids. Can that, I put one in my ear? Yeah, Absolutely. 
And, and I keep um, it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they last for 20 hours on a charge. And They're they, rechargeables. They rechargeables. They don't use those coin batteries. The case is actually the charger and a battery, so it will give you additional runtime. Can you tell I have a uh, hearing aid in? I mean, I can uh, see your IFB. That's either this, really. there's this, yeah. but there's something in my ear. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, by the way, it's working. I can it, hear it is working, and you can <laughs> configure it via your your phone. I mean, that's These the are kind of tech un, that people expect. Configured at this point, but they're yeah. actually doing a pretty good. This job. is straight out of the box. Yeah. So, are they? How do they configure them? Because like New Hira does a kind of like I think it's IR beams that they shoot at your ear, and they're trying to figure out what sounds yeah. best for you. I think um, it's good. You they know, still my, suggest you go to an. When audiologist. I go to an audiologist, right. okay. they do that thing that you did in grade school. You put maybe they don't do it anymore in grade school, but they did it when I was a kid. You put on headphones and they play a tone, and you raise your hand when you hear the tone. Do, you, do they still do that? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I did. School? You could tap. A you ago. could tap a screen on your phone. Now, Beep. well, that's what I did Beep. with this. Believe it or not, that's exactly what you do with the Samsung. Right. And it works the same way, and it gives me great results. So my audiologist still put me in a booth. They put headphones on. They still run a test on you, and then they get a curve, your hearing sensitivity, and they know what to boost and what not. And most hearing aids these days are connected digitally to a mm -hmm. computer where they set the curve in the hearing aid and they put it on you. I imagine these work similarly, except that you do the test yourself the, the, administered. The app on the phone is actually, it's really, really well done. So, I mean, now, they, how they, much are these though? Uh, the, the low end is 1400. The high end is 2500. So they're still really expensive. They're still really less, expensive, less expensive than the non over the counter. Right. Even if you go to Costco, they're half what a Costco here. Right. Costco. Exactly. So did you see the uh, Starkey Livio I think is what they I were, didn't. the Livia. So those were interesting because those are, now these are not hearing aids, but these do track, uh, I believe it's heart rate. They do in English translation. They have a oh, virtual wow. assistant. So I thought it was interesting because I associate Starkey with hearing aids and some other things. They do that make are, hearing, hearing aids with Livio built in. So Livio yes. is a technology and you can get it with or without a hearing aid. Oh, I'd be very so, yes. interested in this. So the new ones, so current Livio users, if you have it, will get an update in the spring of this year. Oh, interesting. So they will start testing some really cool. I mean, I thought those were really interesting. So because you can be like, oh, hey, what's the weather today? And it'll tell well, you. Or if, you can say, how many steps did I take? If you're one of the traditional hearing aid companies like Starkey or Resound or Otacon, you're looking at a, a future that's going to be very different. Mm -hmm. And you probably do want to be proactive. And it's interesting because when something's in your ear, it has access to the same kind of stuff that a Fitbit might have right. plus, right? So uh, there's real opportunities for, I think hearables are going to be a very big category. Uh, not I'm to writing mention, a column about that now. Yeah, I mean, because you could put, you could put uh, Echo in it or, or Google Assistant. Uh, translation, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. That's you the Babelfish, right? You can get galvanic skin response. You can get excellent heart rate. So you can get both EKG and ECG, so brainwaves and heart rate. All from there, like high blood, blood oxygen levels. Yeah, the, my, uh -huh. my Jabra Elites sports say that they can do VOC, mm -hmm. uh, your mm -hmm. oxygen consumption. Uh, oh, I learned how our Jabras work at CES. I talked to the <laughs> NXP engineer, and I was blown away by, he was like, you know why those sound really good? And I was like, they do sound really good. Why? And he's like, there's four mics. They do the DSP processing to figure out, like, if there's wind blowing from one direction, wow. they figure out the least amount of kind of, I guess, noise in the signal to noise ratio on all of the four mics. And then that's the one they use. And that's, that was, that's that for when you're using away. it as a Bluetooth headset to yeah. talk to your phone. Yes, but that's happening on a battery powered device. I know. This big. It's kind of amazing. You know, yeah. that that's actually one of the trends I liked from this CES versus the last two. Last year, everything was AI enabled. The year before that, everything was voice assistant enabled. This year, they had that, but no one was really pushing the trend, uh, which I, I enjoy. It, it, so I'd heard that Google particularly what? had a big presence there. The <laughs> Google Assistant was everywhere, right? And as Amazon yeah. Echo was, right? A lot of Echo enabled. How many Echo enabled devices were announced? All of Hundreds. them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but but I think what you're saying is it's not that they're not there, but they're more integrated into right. The, right. You just assume it's going to be there. It's not like oh, you have to you have to look at this now because it's AI enabled or it's AI voice enabled. It's it that's table stakes now. Right. Uh, and so you have to do something else, and you actually have to show me that you're doing something interesting with that technology. Otherwise, I'm not going to stop. We saw a lot of cars with uh, Echo. Oh, don't get me started too. on the cars. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's stop, and then we'll get you started on the cars. 
And how, by the way, do you need to pee? Um, Check your phone. Just, yeah, I think I'm 40%. <laughs> So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going up. We, we've going been up. plying him with liquor just, you know, to see what happens. Uh, hey, this is fun. Robert Ballester is back in studio with us. He's got a break from his uh, assignment at the Vatican. He's the digital Jesuit at Jesuit.org. Do you get, like, is your rank higher now? Are you now Sergeant Father Robert Ballester? No, I'm I'm the low man on the totem pole. Okay. I'm the brand newest no guy in the house. No fancy hats or anything? Uh, I do have a fancy hat. I, okay. don't, I don't ever wear it. <laughs> What color is your fancy hat? It's black. Oh, you don't have a red one. Yet. No, <laughs> I'm never having a red one. <laughs> never. Just, just checking. Never. Just checking. I feel like, you know, I, 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 you deserve a miter. I can or get something. you one of the red hats if you'd like. I know where they keep them. <laughs> <laughs> is it legal for, I know it would be illegal for you to wear one, but, but what about me, a civilian? Uh, can I wear one? Our, our jurisdiction doesn't go over you, so you can wear all the hats at the same time if you'd like. We could replace yeah. all the twit caps. So, next time you're in the hat closet. <laughs> is there anything Instead interesting? Instead of a fez. Instead of a fez. Like. I think we should have uh, miters. A twit miter. The twit miter. Yeah, that'd be good. Sherilyn Lowe is also here, reviews editor at Engadget. She's probably exhausted. When did you get back? Uh, two nights ago or one night have ago, you something had a chance like to catch up on your sleep? A little bit. Uh, I, I won't go into too much detail, but the first night I was back, it, it felt like there was a fire in my building. Um, so there was smoke in my apartment oh, and I didn't dear. get to sleep the whole night. Holy cow. But I, <laughs> That's the first time I ever heard anybody said, but he's saying, let me go back to CES. <laughs> yeah, to, to get away from the fire. No, yeah. uh, I've still been working over the weekend, so Yikes. not not yet all done with CES, well, no. <laughs> thank you for letting us take a little of your time this evening. Yeah, I of course. Appreciate it. And of course, Stacy, who is working hard, you did a bunch of Stacy on IoT posts from CES, and I bet you have a few more to do. I do, and I just finished up. Tomorrow we'll release the CES edition of the podcast, so that was what I was doing today. Ooh. Look at that tractor. Dude, isn't it awesome? Is that what is it? I it's a John it's Deere. It's a combine. I tried it's to take a, a picture of it, but unfortunately I didn't have the licensing for it, so I couldn't <laughs> post it. This you know, I talked to somebody who listens to the podcasts, Twit Podcasts, in his combine. He says it's basically a living room. The thing drives itself. I just am sitting there in case something you we, know, somebody needs to do something. We could talk about that because because I rode in one of the tractors, um, not the combine, just one of the normal tractors. So and it's it's quite swank in there. Although I was not aware of how much farmers do while they're also driving, so I was pretty impressed. Well, fortunately, well, you know they what listen you need. To podcasts. You know what you need if you're going to drive one of those. What? You need an ultrasonic transducer on your bladder so you know. If, <laughs> oh, if true. You're getting full up. It's. <laughs> When you need a bathroom, right? Depends <laughs> if right. you're raising organic or inorganic <laughs> vegetables, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. Our show today <laughs> brought to you by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality. A brand new site awaits you at WordPress. Whether you're kind of tired of the old place. I just saw that one of the other big web hosting companies, I won't name names, but I think you probably know who it is, has been injecting JavaScript into everybody's pages. It, uh, it's, you know, WordPress is the place to go to make your website. WordPress powers 33% of the internet. One third of the internet runs on WordPress. Matt Mullenweg, when he created WordPress, I jumped on the WordPress bandwagon. I've been using WordPress now for 12 years. It is the best. And now you can build a website that looks like what you want it to be. You know, something that reflects you, not some cookie cutter site. Because they have thousands of templates, powerful site building tools. You don't need to be a geek. You just need to want to say something. Whether it's a personal blog or you've got a business. Maybe you want to sell something online. WordPress lets you pursue whatever it is you love by launching a site free to start with room to grow. WordPress.com was created for you. It was created so you can put your ideas on the web. And you own them. By the way, you own them. You're not you're not working on uh, on on Mark Zuckerberg's farm. You're not you're not working on YouTube's farm. They own your content. With wordpress.com you own it. You upload your videos, audio, text, pictures. I I just love WordPress for that reason. And at any time you can download it too cuz it's yours. WordPress.com was also built to grow with you, to get you where you want to be tomorrow. No two-week trials, no hidden fees. You own your content forever. They have a great customer support team made of actual WordPress experts, not somebody looking at a notebook, but somebody who really knows their stuff, standing by to help you 24 hours a day, including weekends. And man, is it a flexible platform. It's so, some of the biggest 
publishing companies in the world use web wordpress.com go to wordpress.com slash twit you can get 15 percent off any new plan purchase wordpress.com slash twit it's where leolaporte.com is almost everybody i know has a wordpress site you ought to too wordpress.com slash twit and man at 15 percent off that's a great way to start wordpress.com slash twit it's only half a million dollars this combine i need somewhere to park it though Ooh, you need several semis. Actually, what no, was fun is that I talked to them. You it anywhere you want. <laughs> Up front. Go ahead. What they said, <laughs> oh, no, they, they had to, to get that to the show floor. They said they were, they had to make sure they were on the first floor for their booth. They had to be the first in and they had to measure the doors to make sure wow. that, you know, it would fit through. They'll be the last out. They are. Yeah. Actually, they be, could uh, use them to clean I up the leftover booth oh. material. <laughs> yeah. <they're... laughs> Turn it into corn. You know, there is a maximum load you can place on those floors. I've set up shows in, in yes. uh, LVCC before. I didn't think you could actually bring that in there. So uh, apparently my cab driver, not this time I was in Vegas, but a prior time, they told me that another, they do a, a building equipment show where they actually bring in cranes and all that, like, uh, you know, those dump trucks for mining. Whoa. So it's a show dedicated to, to that in the, he said that that is the worst for traffic because they have to close off certain streets to yep. move those things through the wow. convention center. So who won CES, Amazon or Google? <laughs> That's a CNET story. What do you think, Sherilyn? Did you, did you weigh in on this? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I have a personal bias, so I'm going to say Google. Um, I think that Assistant made a bigger splash this year with Google's booth, with Google's announcements. Um, there was a ton of it. I I mean, I, I, I was briefed on some of it, so I think I'm more familiar with the news than I am with the Amazon news, and that might be why I was slightly more biased. Did you go on the Google ride? I did not have any time. <laughs> so Google, I this wish. is this is this is what you do if you have it's a, it's unlimited a small money. World. They recreated it's a small world. But instead of Basically. it's yeah. a small world, after all, they had different things you could do with assistant. Right. Right. Did it you was the story it? of. I, did not. I was going to, I, and then I saw the line. I said no. Did you go, Stacy? No, Kevin went. But it's the story of like these getting a cake for grandma's birthday, yeah. and then at the end, there's like an animatronic grandma that reacts to you and actually uses NLP to talk to you and react with you, well, which was kind of neat. Fortunately, Google has hey, posted Google. Take me on the Google Assistant ride. a 360-degree video the ride of, your life. of the ride. Oh, so even if okay. you weren't at CES, you can, you can go on the ride if the, bandwidth permitting. The cheese. I only have a gigabit. The so cheese hurts. The cheese. It's so cheese. You know, it also depended on where you spent most of your like CES. If you spent it at the Sands, <laughs> Amazon was more prevalent. If you spent it at LVCC, Google was more prevalent. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I will say... Yeah, you could turn down this horrible music. You but can't I, put out a product without having Madam A, as we like to call her, integrated into it. Yeah. So from that standpoint... I talked to a lot of people. They launched with Madam A and Google was coming in a quarter or two. And so if you think about biggest like marketing splash, biggest like presence from that perspective, Google won. But if you just think about like, hey, we've conquered this world and Google's trying to come in and take right. it over. Well, that's a good that's, point. It's kind of a catch up play on Google's part. Oh, it's I totally think still, though, play. that the Google Assistant is, is getting a lot smarter than Alexa is. I, I would say that can already do a lot of things and it started out as a much more capable assistant but with the announcements at the show and all of the stuff that google has been doing to make assistant much more intelligent that we're going to see assistant become much more useful in our lives uh at the show they announced the, the ability to uh, check into your flight via google assistant either on your phone or wherever you're able to use google assistant i think that's a game changer for someone like me who travels a lot um and then over the course of the past year you've we've seen google duplex we've seen google screen calls we've seen google's night site software do very well granted the last one has nothing to do with assistant but google's research into its soft is into its artificial intelligence has a lot of implications for the year going ahead i mean that's where i believe is going to be i haven't seen a make leaps as much as Google has in the past year. I will say I agree that, like, again, Google's playing a sort of catch-up here, but it is trying hard, and it is seeming to be successful. So right. I'm going to debate a little bit with you because, and I'll, 
I'll, I'll do this because I actually swapped out about a month ago my Google Home for my Amazon Echo, or sorry, vice versa. And I found, and I did a post on it on the site a little while ago, um, but Google is super smart and it has all these amazing features, but when it comes time to execute them, it sucks and it falls down. So my, actually, my, my, while I was at CES, my family took the Google, the Google smart display and replaced it with the Echo Show because they were sick of not being able to turn on the TV. And it was a function of Amazon is doing, and, and the problem is Amazon is not as good at doing really cool, fancy things. Um, but they are really good at you bring a device in, it automatically connects. So they've been putting a lot of their attention on the the blocking and tackling at the lower level. Google has been doing things like uh, checking in on your flight, which is totally cool. Um, it does things like, hey, when I say it does voice recognition really well, um, but it took us like an hour and a half to set up voice recognition for my daughter. And we had to do, I think I complained about this on Twig. So we had to figure that out and it still doesn't work all the time. And that's frustrating. And then when you get to like the Google G Suite split, that is also frustrating. Um, I'm, I'm with both of you. I, I, I prefer the Google Suite. I can do more with mm -hmm. the Google Suite, but sure. what assistant did I deploy at my parents' house in Henderson, Nevada? It absolutely was Amazon. Because I don't, I don't want to do troubleshooting for them every other day. At home, I have a Google Home Max, and on top of that, an Amazon Echo Show, and on top of that, the Harman Kardon Cortana. It's a modern device. totem pole. Oh God, why? <laughs> well, yeah. you know. When do you talk? How how often do you talk to Cortana? You, I'm just why curious. Do you need Cortana? By the well, that's an interesting so, question. Do, Cortana, can you ask about, to do something? <laughs> we're talking about Echo and Google. But nobody's talking about Bixby or Siri or Cortana. Oh, no, Bixby is the best. Is this over for Bixby them? is the future. No, what are you insane? No, not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that wasn't killed off so long ago. It really <laughs> is a uh, Amazon versus Google yeah. battle yes. at this point, right? I think Amazon, to you guys' point, has the upper hand definitely in the smart home um, because it was able to integrate with so many other third-party devices early on. Uh, Google has a lot to catch up on on that front. And Google's assistant is better on a smartphone because they they have a smartphone. They have a smartphone ecosystem and Amazon doesn't. Yeah, that was a kind of funny that bit of one-upmanship when Amazon said, we are now on 100 million devices. The next day, Google says, yeah, well, we're on a billion devices. <laughs> so, uh, But of course, that's uh, mostly phones. That's not, you know, that's right. why. That, that, that was supposed to come out earlier, that piece of news, by the way. Just, oh, really? Just behind the scenes, yeah. Oh, why didn't it come out? earlier i have no idea but they changed the date interesting yeah yeah there's they, they know they're in a battle let me ask you though this is kind of um an alternate universe here at ces you're going through when you're riding that google ride and everybody's <laughs> happy because outside of ces aren't people concerned about privacy and what google and amazon are doing with all the data they're collecting i'm not talking about the tin hat folks who say oh my god i don't want jeff bezos listening to all my conversations but there is i think a legitimate concern that these companies have become giant data gathering operations. And are people not concerned about that? Is there a concern? Yes. Do these people care? No. No. They're really, I mean, no. did, any, did yeah. anybody bring it up at CES at all? Oh, yeah. I mean, there was, there was a couple of companies talking about how, like, they do everything locally. So there were a couple of companies there doing that. Um, I think what there were, like, maybe some government panels that focused on privacy, but no, in general, <laughs> Apple no, had although, Apple had that sign on the Marriott, yeah. bad choice of hotel, but <laughs> they had that sign on the Marriott that says what happens on your iPhone stays in your iPhone. That was Apple's little nudge. You right? know, my favorite statement on privacy was at CES. If you went to the Sands, the second floor, as you came in from the press room, there was a booth for Origin, Origin DNA, which is sort of like 23andMe. They right. want to be 23andMe. And they were offering a free DNA test for anyone who wanted it. Yeah. And the, the lines queued up around the oh, hall. Oh, nobody has any I, I actually lined yeah. up. I read the policy. No language in there whatsoever saying that they will not sell or share right. your data. Right. So it's like, just give us, give us your name, your email address, your phone number, and the most personal sensitive information you can ever give anybody. Yeah, forget your fingerprint or your iris scan. That's your DNA, right. And they were, people were signing up for it. I'm thinking, is, what, what is wrong with Isn't people? Isn't that interesting? They don't know, and they that's know. and you don't and you don't think about it. I mean, I I so make wait a this, minute. Is it that they don't know or they don't care? Yes, no. I think it's that they don't make that correlation yet. Yeah. So think about all the times we've even talked about it on the show, like the the 
hey, what what artist picture would you, what fine art would you be? You know, take your picture with Google and give it to her. Yeah. Microsoft had something. So all of that was using, I mean, that was taking your facial data and using it for their right. AI algorithms. And people who complain on one hand about privacy and do that on the other hand, I'm right. kind of like, eh, but they just don't know. They don't. They don't think about that. Yeah, the government and no longer needs to invade my privacy to get that data. They can just buy it from Facebook or 23andMe. We, uh, if you live in certain states, it's already in there right. and, you know, it's part of your driver's license. I did a now. triangulation on Friday with Shoshana Zuboff, who has been working for five years on a big book, I think a very powerful book called Surveillance Capitalism. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a, I recommend the interview. It was tri the last uh, triangulation. But And I really recommend the book. And I don't know what I think about this, but her contention is we're, we've actually hit an inflection point where, you know, initially I think we all were kind of aware of what we were trading. Okay, I'll use Gmail and I'll get ads. And maybe they'll look at what I'm talking about and I'll get ta targeted ads. Or maybe Google will look at my searches and I'll get targeted ads. And then most people said, well, I can live with that. That's acceptable. That's yeah. acceptable. In fact... In my opinion, a targeted ad is better than a general ad because at least it's probably something I'm interested in. Uh, but then it went from that to, and it's going from that to predicting your behavior. And then it's going from that to influencing your yeah. behavior. Manipulating is Manipulating the best you. ad and, you can ever have. And this is, and this is her f real concern. And Facebook has acknowledged that they've done this. They've even done experiments, con what they called contagion experiments, where they put things in the news feed to see if it changes people's emotions you know and they were able to say with with a strong certainty that yeah well we can make you feel good or bad we got that we have the technology that was two years ago so she's very concerned that we're going to enter a world where we no longer have sovereign choice over our lives where we are constantly manipulated by these big data companies and she particularly name checks google and facebook she, and Microsoft, she's less worried about Apple. And she says, this is, a, I hope, an opportunity for Apple to say, let's be the company where your privacy is protected. I fear the that it, the minute Apple's revenues go down, <laughs> Apple will suddenly say, <laughs> yeah. oh, wait a minute, we do have some data here. You know all those stories we get from press people who are freaked out every once in a while when they think their device is listening to them yeah. because it brings up an advertiser. And I try to discourage that point. Yeah, but I, I, it, They don't even have to do that. It's just the predictive algorithm. Yeah. They're looking at the things that you looked at in the past, and they were able to successfully predict what it is that you were actually looking for. Yeah. That's, that's how far that technology has gone. And, and yes, it is a little creepy, but to someone who's not paying attention to that, it, it's more like, wow, this is great. It tells me exactly what I need. Well, I guess the next ad will be exactly what I need. I should go buy it. I, and I know that's simplistic, but that, that actually works. That's why people are willing to pay big money for this. So, well, and I think it's creepy because it's trying to get you to sell something. So right. I think it's awesome when someone knows me well enough to give me like an amazing gift that they know I will like, right? That is like the height of like awesome friendship or romantic love or whatever. You know, they, they know you. When it's a company that's really only interested in selling you something, though, then it's just like, ew. So there wasn't a lot of conversation about the moral implications or the political implications of what's going on. It's just, it's a small world. Get in, ride. Oh my gosh. Google should do a gift giving service. It's kind of like Amazon's uh, little birch box thing. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm so suddenly you, like, wait a second. <laughs> you go on the ride and you get a box filled with the identifying information of someone else. That would be awesome. Just randomize it. I, I have to, you know, I'm, I'm reading the, uh, 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 Zuboff's book and I, I talked a lot with her and I have a lot of thoughts, but I haven't, I'm not really sure where I come down on this one. I yeah. certainly don't want to live in a world where we've lost all agency because big tech companies uh, basically can get us to anything they want. Right. Where democracy is dead, uh, where we live in you know a technocratic uh, authoritarian rule. But uh, she, her, she says our problem with this is there's no precedent for it. So we, you know we can't. It's not like uh, Nazism. It's not something we've seen before. So we can't react to it any better than. Uh, the Aztecs could when Cortez came ashore. They thought he was a god. They didn't know what, you know, is he going to, what, him and these guys are going to take over? Nah, never happened. So, because there was no precedent for it. So, There's I think it's an, interesting, it's an interesting point. It's certainly something we should be aware of. 
And and the problem I have, I think, sometimes with stuff we do and, and in general is that uh, we're, we're kind of acting as shills for these guys to some to some degree. There's there is a bright line differentiator here that we can look at. I am fine with sharing the information about myself that might change as my preferences change. You want to look at my surfing habits? Okay, I'm willing to make that trade off for the services that you offer. However, when you start having tech companies that take data that never changes, like my DNA, um, then then the, there's too much of an imbalance. Well, and Once I should have brought you up because you fuzz gone. your presence oh, yeah, on the net. Yeah. You're constantly dis putting disinformation Which out there. Which is why there. my ads look crazy. Yeah. I get ads for you know restaurants in but, Portland. But I wonder if, if we can successfully fuzz stuff because you still, at some point, it breaks through. AI is going to break through. Correct. So anyway, I don't, I don't want to be a downer. Let's talk some about, about these, uh, yeah. the uh, Lenovo Smart Clock. The best connected home product. <laughs> How about that? This is this is a Google uh, Assistant clock, right? I think that ties very neatly actually into what we were talking about, about privacy. Um, to your point, Leo, I think that the companies like you are still figuring out the best way around this. And at some level right now, they seem to be sort of acknowledging it, but not really rolling out full-fledged plans to deal with this. So with the Lenovo Smart Clock, it's very similar to the Google Home Hub. And Google's take on privacy here is that, hey, we understand your concern. We're not going to build cameras into these things. I love it that so the Home Hub doesn't have a camera. I think that's exactly. great. Exactly. So compared to the Facebook portal, which we shan't even talk about, and the Amazon Echo Show, right? These things have cameras built into them. Um, Google's little piece of privacy play is to be like, hey, we we don't have a camera into this uh, on these things, and you can have this yeah. hard switch for your microphone. But do they need a they camera when they have the phone in my pocket? <laughs> right. Wait, in Google. So wait, in the the Google small devices but the lenovo and the jbl smart displays they do, do have, cameras. have cameras yeah. so right. it's the google important home to hub doesn't and the google smart clock doesn't these two right. devices don't i have an amazon uh, spot clock which has a camera in it so lisa mm -hmm. won't let me put it where it belongs which is on my bedside table <laughs> nothing goes into my bedroom that has a camera or a mic well that's Period. probably that's a good great. idea yeah yeah that's, so maybe that's you our want not even my phone my phone does not go into my bedroom which i know that's like wait what um, maybe you don't. Maybe you want to think about this Lenovo smart clock then, uh, Leo, because it is a clock that doesn't have a camera. I, uh, I use my Google Home as a clock all the time. I, I'm in bed and I go, "What time is? It? Hey, <laughs> what time is it?" And then, and, I, and then I'll say, "Set an alarm." And then it turns on nine. all the lights because it, that's what <laughs> it thought it heard. Yeah. <laughs> I use. I mean, literally every morning. That's. I don't ask Lisa what time it is. I ask my Google Assistant what time it is. So it's maybe for the best. It's a, it's a nice thing to have. I, I have one of those old red LED panel clocks right next to my bed. I don't want any I don't and want it lights. It was so hard to find that. Even in Rome, everything is connected to everything else. I had to go down into the basement and like dig through stuff. What do you mean everything's connected to everything else? The, all, all the new gear that we get, it's all smart. Oh, even in Rome? Even in Rome. Wow. Wow. Well... The smart clock is supposed to be a little <laughs> bit different from the home hub in that it um, it has a different interface, right? It's it's supposed to be smart enough to dim its screen when it's getting a little later uh, and then sort of has this interface where it will 30 minutes before your waking up alarm start glowing in. Um, oh, that's cool. In, to mimic sunlight, uh, right. you know, in your room, it's smaller. Uh, it's it's a little bit more intuitive. And if you want to ask for the time or look at your alarms coming up without saying anything, right? Because it, the the home hub, you have to kind of interact with it almost with your voice right. a lot. With the um, smart clock, the interface is built so that just by swiping a few times, you get to the most key information for your day. You get your calendar events. You get your um, al alarms that you've set. Uh, as well as, yeah, if you're playing music, you see the card for that and, you know, the weather update and all of that stuff. So, I mean, it's it feels a little bit like too similar to the Home Hub sometimes to me, but then it has this not watered down, but rethought interface that is supposed to be more um, appropriate for a bedroom or a more intimate space like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's it, I think it won our best connected home product. Yep. Partly because it is only eighty dollars, and it's a good way for you. For I, I don't have a clock in my room. Like I need one, so I'm actually seriously considering getting I'm gonna that. Buy instead. One. I'm gonna buy oh, one. Yeah, I uh, love the Home Hub. By the way, we use it all the time. It's a great photo frame. But I, I played with the Lenovo one for about five minutes, and I have to say, it is actually a better clock clock yeah. than the Home Hub. The Home Hub 
is too complicated. No, no, no. This is a good clock. Yeah, no. This is this is actually is it, yeah. It's I, not for sale yet. I just looked. Or is it's it? It's not yet, but uh, I believe in spring or later right. this year. Q2. I might get my yeah. I mean, get my dates mixed up. There's a lot of products. <laughs> <laughs> I do not blame you. Pretty much everything just from say CES is later Q2. Later this year. Yeah. Later yeah. this year. Always. Q2, yeah. Q3. Yeah. yeah. Can we talk um, about cars? Well, no. Before we do, oh, I want to talk about. This is the funniest thing in the world. Kettlebells <laughs> are used in gyms because they are as basic a technology as you can get. A really heavy piece of iron with a handle on it. I want this so bad. <laughs> but Jax Jocks has decided to make a smart kettlebell. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's about time. They're so, so dumb. No, no. No, no. <laughs> you know what's awesome about this? It's like four kettlebells in one. It goes from 12 pounds to 42. Wait a minute. How does it yeah. do that? So it got jets it's, in it. You know how Bowflex has that system where you can twist a dial and it, it sort of adds theoretical weights to the ends of your. No, no, it, it's actual weights. Resistance. I have it. I have those. You so, have, yeah, yeah. I have the Bowflex things. They're actual weights. Yeah, there you go. You dial them on. So this actually, and I don't know how this works because there was a really long line and I did not wait. Um, but maybe they explain here. But that's why this is so cool because you have one kettlebell. All of it. Maybe yeah, it's how the can same they make it lighter? System. You must have to pick up more weight, unless well, they've invented anti gravity. It maybe the base or, or maybe the base has more weight. But the point is, <laughs> and also, I will say, as someone who's done kettlebells before, yeah, you have to be very exacting, and it's hard to get your your body in the right. No, I only would do it with a trainer. Yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to hurt myself for sure. And this, yeah. ha and it tracks your motion to make sure you're doing it correctly which right. that's cool so it, you can mock it but there are actually two really functional <laughs> awesome things about this so i was excited that they thought this was a good product because i thought it was too i wanted it it's oh is it magnetic i mean is that the thing it increases the bow flex you flip a thing and it picks up more weights in the dumbbells I'm sure yeah. it's something like that. How else could it be heavier? Yeah, because, I mean, unless the they've created some sort of energy to mass device, in which case a kettlebell oh, is... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Not only do you pay $350 for this kettlebell, you have to subscribe for $30 a month for classes. Oh, gosh. No, actually, that, no, that is a trend. That's well, maybe you don't have to. Trend. Oh, it is. Okay, I, yeah. It is I, a huge trend. I have a trend. Peloton. I know all that. about that. They, they've got all the spinning, all the spinning yeah. apps that you can, uh, you can buy now. Yeah. I use uh, Peloton is great, but it's expensive. Okay, I thought these were amaze balls, and I was really excited. See, it just and shows I don't know what I'm talking about. That's all. <laughs> just I, I just don't know what I'm. You know, about. I I am default mocking anything with exercise, obviously. <laughs> so. You do you pick up extra weights if you look at that base? Yeah, you get it. yeah, yeah, yeah. It attaches more it attaches more weight. Uh, Stacy, every time I get up, I'm picking up extra weight. <laughs> well, by the way, how's your bladder? Oh, <laughs> that's right. That's. Let's be, oh, hey, look at this. You're at 50%. I am, so I am half We got to move the show I'm, along. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, get me some coffee and I can really push this into overdrive. We're half full. Wait, wait, can I ask? So are you, I feel, I would feel uncomfortable sharing that right now on the air, like how full my bladder was. So like. I'm cool. <laughs> obviously you're cool, but I'm, I'm like, what happens like if you're at 95%? Do you like. You will probably see me start to speak a bit faster. <laughs> I think what'll happen is he'll suddenly be at five percent, and I'll probably be bouncing a little bit. <laughs> Just well, this is I like. I'm like. I don't this know is a I safe bladder you know space. That's right. <laughs> well, <laughs> imagine like you're negotiating with someone, and you're like, "Oh, they got to pee." Oh, now. Well, no, no, no. That would be really all, if you home. could hack someone else's monitor and and say, "Okay, he's at nine. So well, I guarantee if, you. If I hold him here I for another thirty you. minutes, I'll get a much better deal. This, this is there's no security on this. I guarantee you. <laughs> well, that's, I could that's probably... what's interesting to me. I'm like, oh, we could like think about this knowledge. How does it apply to the world? Or like, let's say you want to go to the bathroom and you're like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. You don't really have to go to the bathroom. I you're see. Only at according to oh, you. actually, that could be, no, no, seriously. I do have to go to the bathroom. That's oh, yeah. You could really prove <laughs> it. There we go. Actually, we, uh, the Jesuits, we have high schools all over the United States, all over the world. Yes. So we could require this so we could determine if the students actually lie. Then you know what happens. Exactly. They get a bladder buddy and yeah. they attach it to him. And that's not creepy at all. <laughs> at all. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I feel like. Joe, how come you always have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> We've gone too far. <laughs> Our show today, and they're so happy, brought to you by stamps.com. They are they glad they're on this show. Uh, <laughs> no, we love stamps. Actually, you know what? 
The nice thing about stamps.com is if you do have to go, <laughs> you don't have to go to the post office. You can do it at your desk. <laughs> Everything you could do at the post office, you can do at your desk with stamps.com. I... I'm serious. This is an awesome product. We use it here at Twitter. Anybody who does mailing of any kind, but especially, I want to especially tell people who do Etsy or eBay or, you know, if you're a seller, the silliest thing in the world, I get packages on uh, from Etsy and eBay a lot. And they, sometimes they got stamps. They actually licked stamps and put a hundred stamps going around the edge on there. They're tied up with twine and brown paper. It's not professional looking. Go to stamps.com. It's very affordable. You set up an account all the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service. It looks great. It looks professional. Any class of mail, any letter, any package, anywhere in the world you want to send it. And guess what? You push a button, the mail carrier comes and gets it. You don't have to get up from your desk. No more lugging mail to the post office. No more hassles. And you not only save time, you save money. You get discounted postage rates that you can't even get at the post office. It's much less than a postage meter, no special ink, no special hardware of any kind. All you need is your computer, your printer, and Stamps.com. No long-term commitment, no equipment to lease. We use Stamps.com for all of our mailing at Twit. In fact, I love this because I just got my Leo Laporte stamps, which is great. I got stamps with my picture on them, and then you get the Stamps.com prints the indicia on it for the postage. It's awesome. If you ever get a letter from me, it'll have my picture on the stamp, and you'll go, how did he do that? Stamps.com, that's how. We use it, and you should too. We've got a great offer, a four-week trial, plus postage, plus that digital scale. Start your new year off right. Go to Stamps.com, click the microphone in the top of the homepage, enter TWIT. Stamps.com, offer code TWIT. It's a very, very good deal. Stamps.com, click the microphone, enter TWIT. Is it sixty percent? Just that ad alone? No, I, I actually I cut off my drinking right before we started. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually empty on this, but uh, I, I can fill up later. Don't worry. Ah, all right. We there's. I mean, we have just scratched the surface. Yeah. yeah. Um. What? Maybe before we go on to more products, I would like all three of you, since you all three were at CES, to give me kind of what I always try to do, and it's hard to do with 180,000 attendees, thousands of booths, miles of aisles spread out not just not just the Vegas Convention Center or even just the Sands. Sometimes you have to go all the way to Mandalay Bay on the complete other side of town. I mean it's all over. This is a very difficult but 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 when you after you've done all that and you've been there for a few days, I'll start with you, Stacy. Is there an overall theme to this year's CES? Anything you you would say oh, is one, a trend? just one theme? Well, I don't know, two if you want. Oh Jeebus. Um Okay, I there doesn't say, have to be. I mean, no, no. So I, I, I did see a lot. So taking AI to a more practical place is probably a good way to phrase this. But okay. I was thinking about you know AI algorithms around medical devices. So being able to apply intricate, like detailed data, and make assumptions and correlations that should mean something to people, I think is definitely a theme. Okay, it is like. The most long-winded theme ever. No, but that makes um, a lot of sense. It's kind of what Robert was saying. It's kind of the absorption of what was, uh, uh, you know, chrome plating. It was the previous, buzzword. Yep. Yeah, were buzzwords, and now is really kind of integral to many of these products. So I would say yes and no, because I feel like a lot of this is still snake oil. Like, I mean, when I because I'm thinking about the medical space. Granted, the bladder thing, if it's accurate, that is really cool. Um, I, I don't know. It is because accurate. Trust me. I, yeah, I'm like, I'm not, I don't have his bladder. So I'm like, it's not really, I don't know. But, I'm starting to feel uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm probably getting up to the I would, six. I think because of that thing, I would have to pee more. <laughs> like, I'd be more aware of it, right? There actually, okay, there is another device that, that was getting, I'm sure the two of you got it. Did you get any of the PR blast for Attain? Is it the one about keeping your butt clean? N oh, no. That should be yes. called a taint. Yes. It, oy, it was oy. it was to str strengthen your pelvic muscles to deal with incontinence. Oh, I have. Yes, I got yes. There's a bunch of those. Did you get like 50 offers to come and demo the device? Oh, I don't want to oh, demo it. I didn't get it. any to demo that. It involved no, a I probe, don't. Leo. So It involved a probe. Yeah. No probes. I can't did test you? any. There was a it did. Yeah, yeah. Did You did? Oh. oh my god. <laughs> what? 
Wait, well, I missed that. Wait, what? Did they say? Oh, yeah, of course. A priest would Did you go for the demo? Did you I, take no, the demo? No, no, oh. no. Oh, you no, didn't no, do it. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. You said you no. did. No. <laughs> yeah, we were like, we were just like, too far, man. Too far. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm cool with knowing what my bladder's doing. I don't have to fix it right Attain. now. Attain. Attain. You can look it up. I can, you can look it up. Wait, what was the butt cleaning startup? Because I'm real glad I missed that. I We just kept getting pitches for... You know, well, keep that, your butt col that Kohler yeah. toilet, right? That the Echo enabled toilet. I we yeah, use Toto's that, a sponsor. Toto, 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 I love Toto. Toto's awesome. I wanted all of those. Was Toto there? there? Oh yeah. Toto yeah, they were there. there. They actually had a self cleaning toilet that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so it cleans the you, Kohler and then toilet. it cleans itself. Yeah. Did it's you stop by their booth? The Kohler booth or no, the, Toto the, booth? the Toto booth? So yes. they had one that was facing the the uh, the main walkway, and as you would walk by it. The thing would open up both yeah. of the lids. It would start playing like forest sounds and emitted a <laughs> scent of freshness. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's inviting me. It wants me. Compare I felt bad walking past. To the new me intelligent toiler that Kohler showed with Kohler Connect. Because that does some of the same things, right? Mm. Um, it No, Toto actually has a way fancier toilet. It's also oh. way more expensive. They didn't um, get the attention that Kohler did. So that's because it didn't have a inside the oh. cooler toilet or sorry the toto toilet had hold on i've got to look at the press release for that because i don't remember inside. the science the mm. life anew it's called so the toto is uh, technologically advanced in terms of like just toilet things they had the anti-gravity yes. bathtub they have you know their their toilet that does really uh, cool can i use my kettlebell in the anti-gravity bathtub <laughs> i don't know it depends on how heavy of a weight you put on it right um, <laughs> But yeah, so, so that's what Toto is good at. So Toto had, here we go, a bacteria neutralizing ultraviolet yep. light in a titanium in dioxide fired toilet bowl that was initiating right on. a mm -hmm. photocatalytic process that breaks down even microscopic waste products. UVC. It was a UVC light in the lid. That's what it was. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So basically you could poop in that thing and later off you could eat out of it is what no, it's titled. Which I, I, no. I do. I mean <laughs> Toto did not say that. Okay, it's it called the Actilite Bowl Cleansing Technology. <laughs> Here it is in action. So I think that makes sense. I mean, honestly. Wait, this toilet, this toilet is $12,800, whereas the Kohler what? toilet was like seven something, I believe. And the zero gravity tub is $18,799. What does the zero gravity tub do? It regenerates it bathers by putting them in a meditative state. Uh, uh huh. No, no. Sherilyn actually was going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I'm still looking at super hydrophilicity in the uh, decomposition power. I don't know. I don't even want to. Oh man! I, so this oh, toilet it's the is an shape. X -Man. It says it was shaped to simulate a gravityless floating position. Oh, okay. It has hydro hands massaging water jets. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you talking about the tub or the toilet? The tub. <laughs> oh God! I, I would to hope your tub. toilet does not have massage jets. <laughs> I don't want my ultraviolet massaging hands. Oh my God! Oh, here's the tub. It's a flotation <gasps> tub. Oh, but oh, you know what it has? I like An adjustable this. headrest with cascading water yeah, shoulder warmth. Ooh. Okay, that's cool. I would totally use that. This is yeah, that's to, way better than Alexa. Looks like a Cialis ad. Uh, can, <laughs> <laughs> why is my tub in the forest? <laughs> okay, so she's. This is showing. She's uh, not in a tub. By the way, I don't. I don't look like that when I'm underwater. Just FYI. <laughs> That's the question. Uh, it, it, will it work with Father Robert? Like, if you're dead, maybe you look like that <laughs> underwater. So wait a minute. I gotta go move along in this video because we're doing a lot of simulation. Let's, oh, look, it's an it was astronaut. This astronaut. <laughs> Deeply stimulating water massage gives the feeling of real hands in your bathtub. No, it really doesn't. It really does. That would be so creepy. I don't <laughs> I want real hands. Oh my God, no. serial killer time. Uh, <laughs> who's touching my leg? Can you imagine that ad? My God, it felt like real hands. How much is this? Oh, look, you want that, Stacy? I it's do. It's a waterfall headrest. So they say, so on the website, it's $19,000, which is more expensive than what Toto told me in the press release. So I'm kind of feeling a little disappointed. Well, do you but... want the waterfall headset or okay. not? See, this is what it actually looks like in real life. And it's it's just it's a tub. It's a tub. It really. I mean, it's a really. But that's I don't know any of the glamour. Don't you it's want a that tub thing? And it has lights. You forgot the color changing lights. Well, I mean, yeah. Or I could just okay. get one of these for like twenty dollars. 
What's and that? It's waterproof and just float a few of them. And this color changes too. It's that is a. It's, uh, it's a like Did you a, build a that? like a, yeah. It <laughs> looks like looks like a prototype. Uh, this this is what. Uh, have you ever heard of that uh, that company Empowered? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They they kind of upgraded their line. They they originally made these for like camping and for because it's got a solar panel on the top. It's all solar. It looks powered. like the kind of thing you catch butterflies in, it like does. a little jar, a, a Leiden jar. But it's not. It's a it's a camp light. It even has a little yeah. Handle. And this is inflatable, so it collapses it's down. <laughs> inflatable. Yeah. Th no, this is all. This then, is all. Inflatable. And then what happens? It's a glowy little. It's. A, I mean, camp it, light. They were really just lights, but now it's Bluetooth enabled because you know you need a Q light when you're camping. Oh, nice. I mean, it, it's simple tech like this that I, I really enjoy. I took a lot of this stuff home from CES just because it's stuff that I actually will use. I'll probably drop this off the next time I'm visiting so one of our other countries. Lesson learned, though, f uh, from Toto that you should have put if they if put if you put a in everything. Yeah, and you'll get press coverage and waterfalls. I actually talked yeah. to Toto last year versus Kohler. We had them on stage for my smart bathroom panel, um, and the zero flotation tub was already here at last CES. Oh, see, so we I asked them why didn't they put a in their products because you know Kohler did it last year, and Toto said that it was trying to be more thoughtful about where it was putting technology in its products, Thank especially you. space and intimate at the bathroom. So they are figuring that out. They're just they're just taking their time and they have so much other tech they want to show off that doesn't really strike some of us as tech tech, right? right. Because a right. zero flotation tub might not be connected to a phone, right. but it is technology that they're trying to show off here at the show. So they have that stuff to show and uh, to them that may or may not be enough. We will see. So uh, Stacy said integration of AI into everything was one of the themes she saw at CES. What about you, Sherilyn? What would you, is there, can you, I boil all of this down into some simple ideas for people like me. I think themes are, are something you notice depending on your coverage, right? So I focused a lot on laptops um, this CES and there was just a lot of exciting change happening in laptops that I wasn't expecting. Um, NVIDIA announced a new uh, ray tracing chip for laptops. So that's going to bring really powerful gaming performance to gaming laptops. And sure enough, a whole bunch of gaming laptop makers announced that they would have laptops with that specific NVIDIA RTX 2060 chip inside. Um, and then Intel also had some news about, uh, it, it launched a new set of desktop class chipsets that's not necessarily for laptops, but more about the PC space. But it also showed off new architecture um, for its next generation of chips that would be really cool. So basically they, they have this hybrid architecture that will let you stack things like um, RAM or memory on top of uh, the, the CPU footprint. And so conserve a lot of space, but still bring performing power that you would want out of the laptop. So it's setting the stage for a very exciting year ahead for PCs. And AI also comes into this, to Stacey's point, where they're trying to look into how to use AI to better manage performance, how to use AI to better ma manage battery power. Um, so personally, because I'm a PC nerd, I think there's a lot of PC news out of CES that, that I wasn't expecting that excited me. Yeah, I mean, you know, CES is... Oh I guess to some degree always had a lot of PCs, but you don't expect to see big announcements at CES because there's so many other things going on there. Usually people defer to Computex or other events, mm -hmm. but it's, but it's interesting. Is it, is it mostly designed? I mean, I feel like to some degree PCs are at a plateau there. There's not a lot more you can do with a PC, but or it sounds like there's maybe some innovation too, not just design. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I thought that they were stagnating too, but last year we had a resurgence of PC tech, and this year it seems like there's even more to expect. Um, design, performance, we're looking at every year, but this year we're also looking at more and more connected laptops. So laptops that will be always online, always connected to, to say, at least LTE. We're also expecting the first 5G laptops to be available in 2019. Yes. And that's another buzzword, right? 5G all over uh, CES, even though not a lot of people had product to show for it, but everyone was like, we're going to make a 5G version of this at some point this year. And, and that's a lot of hype. We are expecting to see the first 5G networks and products roll out this year. But just because they were talked about at CES doesn't mean there was anything to show. There was obviously, there was a, an a Netgear or, yeah, Netgear had, I think, a 5G hotspot uh, to launch. And then there was also 5G 
uh, chipsets that Intel showed off that they meant to apply in things like base stations. So there was some news, but it wasn't the big splash um, about 5G that I was expecting coming into the show. It does. Well, f first of all, I guess I would ask maybe Stacy, I know you've been following this. How far out is widespread 5G availability in the U.S.? Is it a year out, two years out, five years out? If we're talking about like the 3GPP standard, because that's the other thing. Everyone calls everything 5G. Well, AT&T is getting heat because of 5GE, which is really LTE. Uh, so so Verizon's doing something 5G, different at 5G Which is in why Qualcomm changed that one thing in their booth. They, ha they had their, their pre-CES um, um, uh, PR blast that showed Qualcomm 5G. Yeah. They changed it. Uh, their signage changed in their booth to Qualcomm Real, real 5G. 5G. I'm like, oh, okay. So when is day. real 5G uh, going to be available, Stacy? Um, widespread and in use. Yeah. Um, end of 2019, I would say. I mean, you well, are going to see networks that are using it. Um, you're not going to see it on phones for a while. But um, it would be reasonable since you're going to own that laptop for a few years. Or a phone even for a couple of three years. Well, so wait. At this so point, to think about something that might have 5G capability, if it's going to be available in a year. It's more of a We have to look at the at spectrum, first. too. Yeah. So there's two things. There's the 5G radio spec that is done by the 3GPP, which does all the cellular standards. And then there's what some people call 5G, like when Qual or I'm sorry, AT when Verizon's talking about 5G, they're talking about like, and they're doing it like for fixed broadband. Yeah. They're talking about using a uh, millimeter wave spectrum to like offer coverage in the home. Um, so, but that's not the standard that everybody's going to use when 5G really comes, right? That's well, it's unclear what's so AT&T is using some of its millimeter wave spectrum. I think I can't remember which if it's 28 or 34 or what, but they're also they're going to have to use the same 5G standard over their 3G and but maybe some of their 4G You get spectrum. what I'm asking, which is if you're going to buy a laptop, and nowadays I think you want it depends a couple on of what things with a laptop. You want a lot of battery, right? And I think that's one thing we're seeing. And you, want, I think you would, if you want an LTE-enabled laptop, why not get one that's 5G capable? You're saying the standard isn't settled enough to choose Well, I'm one. saying we don't know what spectrum it's going to run over. So, so you if can't. you're going to put a radio in, you it has to cover. Right. So the here's the thing. Okay, I spoke to Samsung and Qualcomm about 5G and the 5G rollout in 2019 as well. And, um, you know, the first 5G phones are coming in 2019. We are expecting Galaxy's mm -hmm. Galaxy uh, the next S10 Galaxy will have it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. Um, to Stacey's point, I think what she's trying to get at is that, like, there there are two parts to 5G NR, the, the new spectrum, uh, the new specification that's that everyone's expecting to launch this year. There's the part that still feels a lot like LTE, and there's the part that's using millimeter waves. And to get that part working and, and what we think of as true 5G, a device has to have the radios, the, the, the antenna that do beam forming and beam tracing uh. to pick up these very short frequency uh. or short, like, distance waves and that's what the industry or at least i think of as true 5g and so the phones that we're expecting to come out will have those um not it doesn't so the snapdragon 855 was announced just last month and that is a compatible with 5g cpu but without the radio that supports 5g a phone announced with 855 might not support 5g you need the, so, the tunable antennas and the chip well, and exactly. you also have to to her. the infrastructure. Good she job. knows what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah. So actually, it sounds like, and, and, and are any of these 5G ready laptops, do any of them have those features? We're not, we haven't seen any announced Nothing. with them yet. Any. They're just saying that they're going to make them. So we need to see okay. when the devices actually get announced, whether they have these antenna, these components that That's make them look for. Okay. Millimeter wave, yeah. But you should see them. It's much easier to do like beam forming and cram more into a laptop than it is into a phone. So right. I would expect more capabilities from the laptop than just a plain phone. Is it holding That's up it. manufacturers though that their standard is still in flux or? Uh, this, no, the standard's not in flux. NR is specified and ready to go, but we yes. are looking at the next stage, which is how to bring IoT into 5G. And that's what is more, uh, you know, looking forward. Right now, they have settled on NR, and you so know, we NR have a can spec. Is it up to implementation then that, that that's unknown? Yeah. Or? yeah, yeah, it's more or less it's more or less ready to go. It's whether the carriers are going to deploy it widespread. Right. Um, there's How a lot of infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because you have to remember, since you're using such a high frequency, 
that does not penetrate nearly oh, need, as well. You need many, many, you many need more cell far sites. Far more. I mean, not yeah. just double or triple. It, it is an order of magnitude is more. Is it really that many more? Yeah, it yeah. is. It's ridiculous. But I mean, and it's fast. Gonna, but you need you but need you need that to be five end. feet away from a micro Something millimeter. Like well, transfer. so both Verizon and AT and T, though, when they actually do deployments, they're going to use both millimeter wave when they can, and then they're going to use other spectrum. So, so it's different. not all going to okay. go. So yes. You're gonna it you're gonna be, see them compatible. So it would it would be fair to say it's even though the spec is defined, implementation is still in flux, and so buying five G ready hardware today is difficult to do. You can't be sure it's. How about the? By the way, uh, one of the things that happened this week, Samsung sent out invitations to their event, uh, February twentieth in San Francisco. And they're going to probably yeah. announce an S10. They're probably going to be a 5G ready S10 as well as that foldable phone. Wait, what is Mobile World Congress? Isn't it? No, they're doing it no. early. No, they're, they're doing it they're earlier. They're jumping than the gun. WC. Okay, I was like, wait a second. I know. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll cover it. I was invited, but I think I'd rather sit here and watch it from afar. Uh, is that going to be implemented? Well, we don't know yet, right? We don't know how. So I doing. asked again. Sorry to keep cutting in. Because no, I please, Sherilyn. You know I what's going on. I want to yeah. know. <laughs> I had this exact conversation with Samsung and Qualcomm on my stage, and I asked them, hey, when your phone does launch with 5G on it, are we going to turn on our phone? Are we going to see the 5G icon yeah. at where you would see, right? And um, Qualcomm's answer for me uh, was that this is sort of something you'll turn on, you'll first see 4G, and then it's something that will roll out later. So I don't think when you first get the S10, S10 in hand no. that you will see that, but it is something that has to go through some sort of update. So the phone is ready for it. The it's hardware a software is update. It's not a hardware update. It's a software exactly. update. Exactly. Okay. So you, and of course, you it depends be, what carrier yeah. you're on and whether they're going to offer it in your neck of the woods and all of that too. Yeah, I think the rural rollout is going to be terribly slow. I think that... It's not going to come to the woods. That was mm -mm, a no. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> if so you need hard. 10 times the number of cell sites, the last place they're going to put it is out in the woods. But it's all going to be in big urban areas at first. You don't need it in the woods so much. because I mean, as long as you have coverage out there. If you have no coverage, you're not going to magically suddenly get coverage. But, right. you know, there's not a lot of people sucking up your bandwidth there. Ah, so. so it's less important. So I guess what I was trying to get at is if people listening now should start thinking about getting 5G hardware, and it sounds like that's no, probably not the case. No, I, I think to a practical deployment of 5G, we are an upgrade cycle away. Yeah. Okay. So I could still look. What was your favorite, Sherilyn, laptop that you saw? Uh, the, some of these are very, oh. very pretty. This, I've is, got mine. I know what mine. What is this? Is this the Alienware? Which one is this? That's beautiful. That... Uh, man, I don't even think that's an actual laptop. Um. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. I I'm like the, sure. I do like the HP Elite lines. This is their Omen 15, I which is the, my favorite. The sequence. I bet you have an Acer Swift 7 in mind. No, no, no. no. I, the, 7 is pretty, though. The eight, the, no, the Swift 7 is absolutely pretty. They did a great job making that bezel-less, but the mm -hmm. Acer Predator Triton 900. Uh. That thing is a monster. The Predator Triton 900. It's an IPS screen, 4K touch. Um, it's got an easy hinge, the easel hinge, so you can actually move the screen closer to you, turn it into a tablet. It's a it's NVIDIA $4, RTX 2080, 4,000, 32 gigabytes of memory. It's a RAID 0 SSD. It even has a port uh -huh. on the side. If you use an Xbox controller, you can actually plug in the Ooh, USB like the receiver screen. and then tuck it away. It that is, is a wild. beautiful machine. So mm -hmm. it kind of has little levers and... Right, it eighth can, gen Intel i seven. I think it's the eighty seven fifty. You know, you gotta feel sorry for Apple because <laughs> they're already behind, and now they they're just like they they've been lapped, basically, right? I mean, if you're talking about Apple being lapped and talking about what we were just you know discussing earlier, Apple hasn't even talked about a five G phone. We're not expecting an Apple five G no, phone to come out. So they said you know, not till twenty twenty, probably. Right. Yeah. Partly right, that's because so. they're abandoning Qualcomm. So Intel has Ooh. to, yeah. The, yeah, Intel or Apple have to figure this one out, yeah. Yeah, it's Good a prickly luck. one for them. Yeah. Uh, well, laptop wise, let's go, sorry. Oh. No, I was bummed because I just, my daughter for Christmas wanted a gaming laptop. But so we spent a lot of time trying to find a gaming laptop and she hated all of them. And so she ended up with a MacBook Pro that is like severely underpowered. That she can't play games on at all. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you could play Fortnite on it. But well, she what hated, does your daughter she want? She hated all this. She wanted 
a nice screen. It was, and the, was it the design or, oh, it was the screen. No, it was the screen. We couldn't, she hates matte screens, which ah. they're everywhere. So then we were looking at touch. I mean, and, and part of it was also a cost thing. I was not going to spend $4,000 on a computer for they have an $1,800 just playing games. version. That has we'll see, a, now that, a 144 hertz panel. It's basically the same, same processor, same GPU, uh, same memory setup, same rate. It just it's not as sexy as the four thousand. This is the model. Acer Predator. They, they have the the uh, the 500. So they have the 500 and the and the 900. Okay. Yeah. So this this was our journey, like before Christmas, and then like yeah, with the Nvidia news, I was like. God. Yeah. <laughs> so sh I do think this uh, Nvidia ray tracing uh, yeah. Yeah, would no, be that was very interesting. I, I was actually yes. going to get a blade. The office was going to get me a blade, a razor blade, because I needed something for editing on the go. And that's our, their eGPU, their well, well, external it, right, GPU. Right. Yeah. But our procurement process is so slow that I can now say, "Oh no, no, hold off." I you have get Michelangelo's <laughs> blade, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Uh, so, Sherilyn, did you say, did you pick? Because you, I still yeah. need you to pick. Which one do you like the yeah. best? We gave the award for best PC to the Dell XPS 13 with its new yeah. Dolby Vision HDR display. The Dell XPS line is so reliable. There is, it's hard to, you know, argue against it. Um, and you know what? I, I, I fought for it to win an award simply for the fact that Dell finally moved the webcam from below the screen <laughs> to above it. Hallelujah. Yes. That's just strange. No more nose cam. Yeah. I wanted I, Yes. I was going to buy an XPS and I was like, oh, no. I, <laughs> so this year. I have one issue with the, the Dell, HP, uh, Alienware, and MSI uh, laptops, the gaming laptops. And that is. Uh, they do great performance for about five minutes. The cooling is not mm. nearly enough what it needs to be, so it always derates. Yeah, uh, which is this why is a I problem mean, in general. Yeah, I'll with still these go with the, the larger gaming laptops because I can use it. So, Sherlyn, I'm kind of surprised because I, I like the XPS line. Yeah. I've had 13s and 15s. I like the almost bezel-less design, but it isn't exactly an inspiring computer. Um, I mean, it's kind of just reliable. a generic-looking laptop. Oh, I am with you. I mean, here's the thing: we well, okay, it's white. <laughs> The white one came out last year with a stain resistant coating, which was interesting. Um, I think we, you know, again, the, the awards giving process, we debate things, right? And there are inspiring things on the list, but there is also like what ends up ultimately What's being the practical. best of the best, yeah, yeah. the actual best. And yeah. I think the XPS line is, there are other, I mean, we also have a gaming category, gaming hardware category. And so that's where we look to, to give our gaming laptops kind of more of a focus um, for laptops itself or PCs alone. I think it made sense for us. There are uh, the uh, our other considerations were, you know, HP's uh, laptop. We had uh, it didn't make the final cut, but Huawei had a new Mate book that uh, was also pretty nice. Oh, that's it. But now, okay, wait a minute. Stop there, right there. So, I really like the Huawei's. I think they're beautiful. I love it. But, I mean, would should you buy a Huawei after all the? I mean, now who's suing them? Uh, Poland is suing. <laughs> I mean, it is, they say they arrested Huawei executives and. In Canada, well, Huawei fired that executive after being caught for oh, spying. Okay, well, <laughs> well, it's all better now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, what is there. CNET's point take on this? Do you do you stay away from Huawei after all the noise, or is it? <laughs> I don't in know what CNET take. But <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, in gadget. Did I say CNET? I apologize. What is in no, gadgets you... take on all? I think we we like everyone have to have to caution um, you know about it because there is there we don't know for sure whether or not these things are actually spying on you for the Chinese government but it never hurts to be too careful. I personally use a Huawei laptop for conventions. You use and a Mate Twenty shows. or what? What do you use? I use this Mate laptop. Book? This yeah. is a Mate it's beautiful. Book. Isn't it gorgeous? It's so thin. It's, it's light. It's thin light it's powerful enough it yeah. lasts all day and yeah. i really like it a lot so there's not much to, to and president to fight. she knows everything you're doing <laughs> uh you know what listen it's not like i'm doing anything too terrible exactly yeah, Who cares? Or, yeah. most of her but, stuff is published so right <laughs> eventually right but uh i mean i write a lot of stuff about china on that laptop too um but the the phones are a bigger concern because then that's like a more personal device right. that's you know you got radios that are constantly communicating to any sort of network and so it's more easy to to hack or hijack um or, or listen in on so it's it, it's something we 
my team will always mention that, hey, we love it. The hardware is great. The performance is excellent. But you always have this lingering doubt about whether or not you can actually buy it. And I think that reason alone keeps us from ever really recommending it. In a way, that's a shame because all of these are made in China. Right. Uh, they all come through the ch supply chain and are vulnerable at, at various points I, in the I've supply chain. I've got some chain. bad Huawei stories, though. So I Really? You think yeah. you think Huawei is worse, say, than, than any other Chinese I, company? Uh, they had more access than a lot of other Chinese companies. Uh, I, I think we're past the NDA on this, but I worked with Huawei in a data center once um, where for a show. By the way, whatever that right. is, it's is now, making a lot of noise now, in your mic. It's now transmitting to my mic. <laughs> okay. No, but, um, and um, so we were, we were configuring their switches. We couldn't get them to work right. And uh, one of the, uh, the 3Com slash HP engineers jumped on the console and was looking through their code and they found a line, HP, copyright. You know, oh, so they had actually just taken HP microcode and run okay, it on. That's the not a nice thing to do, but it's not spying on you it, either. It's not spying on you, but it's like, well, then what kind of level of competence do you have? Here? Or integrity. Or integrity. Yeah. And and that really left. And that was ten years ago. That left a hugely bad taste in my mouth of ever working with the company because if they don't even know their own gear, right? The stuff that they were selling for you know multiple tens of thousands of dollars, I don't know if I want to do business with them. <sighs> This is a conversation we have. I've been having over the last couple of months a lot, and I, I don't yeah. know what the right answer is to it. Fortunately, there are many other choices. On the other hand, I hate if Huawei is innocent. I hate to, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, they're being hurt economically seriously econ by by. Uh, yeah, but not, they're not that badly. I mean, they do all right yeah. in China. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a global in market Asia. for this. That's yeah. true. In Asia. Yeah. It's just in the U.S. They're not doing well. All right. They're doing really well in India. Yeah. So. All right, so uh, your vote, the Dell XPS 13, which I've always thought is nice. I do like these new Omen 15s from uh, HP. They look pretty. Do you want to get the ARM-powered one, Leo? So, the, the, Leo, to clarify, that picture that you're looking at is the Spectre X360. That's and what I an thought. Omen. It looks yeah, just like a Spectre. a Spectre. Oh, okay. This is the no, Omen. Oh, that's, that's ugly. Nothing. Yick. <laughs> <laughs> but it does have, but it, I have to say, it does have that new NVIDIA uh, 2070 in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got the 240 hertz display. It's a really good gaming laptop. It's a but gaming two, laptop, two, yeah. Right. To Father Robert's point, it's not, you know, uh, the most thermally powerful system. This is becoming, you know, Apple uh, got a lot of attention for its i9 processor and thermal throttling. And then they put out a software patch that seems to have e well, because, helped right. by what, slowing it down. Well, it slows it down, but it also, it they recognize that that last they can't get over 10 percent yeah. of performance is 90 percent of the thermal waste right so if they can balance that last 10 percent they can still give you an experience that is almost like having full power right. but you never suddenly drop frames down to like a third of what it should be right uh, are other laptop manufacturers finding similar solutions uh, actually acer does that they they uh, oh and uh, nvidia does that it's called max q right so it's take it up to the point at which it can be maintained, not to the point at which you're going to have to throttle down in 10 minutes right. and stay at low performance for the next half hour. Anything good from Lenovo? You know I'm a Lenovo fan. Uh, some of the Lenovo gear actually was, was quite nice. It all looks the same. I mean, that's the Lenovo <laughs> thing. It all looks the same. Yeah. But I uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I did manage to get around to writing in detail about the Lenovo laptops we saw, but I don't know if you're a ThinkPad fan, Leo. I am. Um, you are. I, I am they, a ThinkPad guy. Yeah, there are new ThinkPads, uh, the seventh generation X1 Carbon, and I believe the fourth or fifth generation X1 Yoga. Uh, the biggest changes, I believe, are in you know external appearance-wise. There's a new like carbon fiber dot pattern on the X1 Carbon, but the material is lighter than before. So some people th might say it feels a little flimsy. Some people actually prefer the the lighter footprint. And then the Yoga itself has a metal chassis and it feels heavier but it also at the same time feels more premium so it's a, a trade-off uh, i don't know what you personally would prefer but maybe if you get to see them in person you might have some strong feelings i have a, a second generation yoga which i've now given to my uh, daughter for her audio production and i have a t470 which is that's a couple of years ago so i like the industrial strength Lenovo's. Mm. I might, might get a new Yoga. It's a good look. They run Linux so nicely. They do. That's really my my real reason for liking them. I can only tolerate so much Windows 10 and then eventually... I, I, like, play, I, like, I like the flexibility of Yoga. I can't like really justify buying one just for no, fun, they're, but I, they're I do love like yeah. 
Like, mm. You like two in ones. You like that idea yeah. of bending it over. And, yeah. Well, I like. I mean, I like it for travel. Although I wouldn't want a heavier one because they tend to be a little heavier. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like you know because I spend a lot of time on airplanes. Yep. Being able to like squish my computer. Well, it's also <laughs> tent mode's great for watching movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, did, they uh, had OLED screens. The one, the Yoga Two uh, second generation Yoga I had had an OLED screen. Have they? Has everybody abandoned OLED screens and laptops? Uh -uh. They all came back. Sorry. They're back. AMOLED yeah. screens came back. Yay. On laptops. This I think year they're too, gorgeous. They're colorful. They're brilliant. Okay. They're power yeah, efficient. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah. Are they power they're efficient? Because wasn't that one of the knocks was that they, they use too much they, juice? Well, if you use them correctly, they're power okay. efficient. Oh, good. Wait, so I'm how glad. do I use a screen correctly? Hold no, on. No, if the I manufacturer need... uses it. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> like, oh, crap. <laughs> you have to hold it to the side. Like Hold on, that. guys. I'm, just, I'm maximizing my yeah. battery life. No, but if your daughter likes glossy screens, she would love yeah. an OLED we, laptop. They're gorgeous. Yeah, we got her a yoga first, and yeah. she did not care for it at all. Really? That was sad. Yeah. She's kind of fussy. Well, but that's the great thing. There's so many choices. There's so many options out there. So that's interesting. So there, so there aren't if you like a glossy screen, but yeah. I can't wait. And you need a discrete graphics card. That Those were my two. They were like... They're mutually exclusive. I kind of hate mm. glossy screens. I really do. I know. I know. I do. Like a lot of people do, but she loves them. And I'm a glossy guy as well. I, I kind of like a glossy screen. I think the and colors look better. The darks look darker. But I mean, if you're if you're going for color accuracy. Oh, who cares about accuracy? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm immersed in my own world. I don't care. I'm not picking my Pantone, you know. <laughs> I will also say a lot of the screens like are really dim. Like we noticed that like shop it because I haven't really shopped for a laptop in a while, but like we're talking like 250 nits or some like I was trying to figure out the right metric and I'm not a laptop. Now, kind of are you sure the screens were dim or did they just have Microsoft adaptive brightness turned on? Because that's the oh. first thing I turn off every time I get well, a new Well, maybe that's what I should. Because I was a just horrible, like, horrible feature. Yeah, it was so muddy and her games are so beautiful. I was like, why would you do that? Yeah, seriously, okay. just just try that. Just go to the power mm -hmm. settings, go to advanced, go to monitor, and it uh, okay. you have two settings for adaptive brightness. When it's plugged in, when it's on battery, turn them both off, and it feels like a brand new screen. Where were you when we were Sorry. trying out Sorry. screens? Oh, <laughs> terrible. You know, you know what? I think uh, I think you would have liked this uh, Spectre X360. That is a sexy, sexy with a 15-inch AMOLED. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, is that I didn't pretty? see. I didn't even look at laptops at CES because mm. after I heard the Nvidia news, I was like, I'm just gonna have like buyer's remorse out the wazoo. Mm. <laughs> well, the the, the Razer with the 2080 looked nice. I mean, it's just like the previous blade, but it. it I mean, it, who's gonna go wrong with the Razer? <laughs> and and I would have given your daughter the Spectre Folio because it's leather. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sherlyn, no, no leather laptops for you. There actually was one ba one laptop in the sands that was made of bamboo, not covered in bamboo. Ooh. The case was bamboo. I'm like, hmm, hmm. okay. That's eco-friendly. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Until it starts warping because it got wet. I don't know. All right, Father or, Robert, your turn. Big trends <laughs> this year, CES 2019. Uh, big trends would be... Um, Companies misusing or com conflating automation with AI. Oh yeah, you see a lot of that. I, but that's I, I you know that that really bothers that's, me. That's like two years ago where everything had blockchain. Right now, right. AI is the oh. new blockchain. Yeah. Right? Oh are, no, no, there's still lots of blockchain. Oh, a, a, blockchain with AI would even be better. No, no, yeah. there, there's a there's an AI blockchain company that's also <laughs> uh, voice enabled. Which was I'm like, it does it do security too? Because that's important. <laughs> uh, so I mean. Uh, there are there were some great companies showing off AI applications that are wonderful, but it is still a little buzz worthy yeah. in that some company are including AI kits in their products that don't need AI kits at all. Right. They just need uh, they need if this happens, then do that. Right. And that's not an AI application. Right. Um, I also saw a trend. I'm doing the negative trends because they did the positive ones. OK. Um, I saw the trend of forgetting the past, uh, specifically in the car pavilion. You've got a lot of connected uh, accessory manufacturers, so connected dashboards, connected entertainment systems, that when I started asking simple security questions, like, is this directly connected to the CAN bus? They were like, yeah, yeah, sure, there's no problem with that. Yeah. And that just blows my mind. It's like, wait a minute, it was just a couple of years ago that, that Valasek and Miller showed that they could take over a That's Jeep right. Cherokee remotely. Right. Mm -hmm. The um, Okay, 
The, but they didn't do that by attaching to the CAN bus. They got into the chip that controlled that. So but the I'm problem just, is everything was right. CAN bus together. So right, if you can so, get in the entertainment yes. system, then you can get into the car exactly. control so system. Exactly. So they were yes. able to pivot from the entertainment system to the CAN bus right. because it was connected. And I, there was only one manufacturer I talked to that did it the right way, where they said, no, 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 there's actually a device between the entertainment there center and the be. CAN yeah. bus. It only allows for yeah. one-way communication. So we can read messages from the CAN bus. We cannot write anything to it. I was talking okay. to Sam Abul Samid, who is our car guy. Uh, he's from Navigant Research. He's on my radio show now every mm -hmm. week talking about cars. And that's exactly what he was yeah. talking about, is how at CES we're moving from small controllers and ASICs uh, you know, hundreds of them and all mm -hmm. sorts of things to a couple of powerful, simple, uh, big computers that do everything. That's but then there's idea. that security concern yeah. that if it does everything, it means it can do anything. Well, the CAN bus was never designed to be publicly secure. accessible. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It, there is no authentication. There's right. no encryption. So if you're on the CAN bus, you have control of everything on the CAN bus. Yeah. Oh, and Apple. I think that... <laughs> Apple? I Apple. know. That was the first time they were at CES. Thank you. Yeah. Apple say, uh, and Samsung making their big announcement that iTunes, their client, is going to be in the Samsung wow. television. Wow. That was interesting. I mean, here's these are her, almost hereditary enemies, Samsung and Apple. They've been suing each other for decades. All of a sudden, Samsung's putting iTunes in its TVs. And not just Samsung. LG. Lots of people. Mm -hmm. AirPlay 2. I, I, already, I hate smart screens, and I, I won't ever use any apps. On no, I like screen. an external smart device I external connected. I want a monitor. I don't want it, I don't want the TV to know anything. But I think just from a strategic point of view, this this feels so much like way back when, when Apple started licensing out their OS. Yeah. Apple's thing is it's theirs. They own it from soup to nuts. Uh, and the fact that they're now letting another manufacturer take one of their babies, one of their last major profitable centers, and include it in one of their TVs and tweak it the way that they want it, that's, I don't, I mean, a great for choice, but I think that's a horrible mistake for Apple. Steve Kovac writing at CNBC says Apple's famous walled garden is starting to show cracks. He says this is all part and parcel with the new Apple where they're not breaking down phone sales anymore individually they're not or product sales at all the the you know with after tim cook's uh advisory that they were going to make less money because of china this year after uh apple's pointing to services and away from per unit sales uh this is the future the apple selling services is he says this is evidence further evidence that apple's sees its future as selling services, not products. Well, I mean, that's Microsoft so, pivoted to that. And if you're doing ago. that, I mean, wasn't it? I mean, this, the, that's when that's when iPod took off is when Apple, when Steve Jobs finally got off his high horse and said, all right, we'll make window, iTunes for Windows. That's when iPod sales really took off. And so isn't it a good move for Apple well, to say, well, look, we're going to make iTunes, especially since they now have, uh, or it looks like they're going to have a TV service of some kind this year with so, their own product. But one of the first things that Steve Jobs oh. did when he came back was he took everything back from all the Scully the years. Well, he Steve said, We're did not back. want to do iTunes for Windows. He had to be persuaded right, to do right. that. But it w turned out to be the right thing. Go ahead, Stacey. So let's think about it macro big picture because there's been a couple things and there was the Tim Cook interview. So if you think about opening it up, if you think about the phone market being saturated, if you think about Apple saying, oh crap, our music is still a big deal and we can push it and keep people in our ecosystem in this market that we're not abandoning, but it's no longer a growth market for us. And you look at them going into medical devices. If you think about Apple being good at selling hardware, really well-designed, fantastic hardware, really crappy at services, really crappy at the cloud. And they're going to continue to be that way because of their AI, their, their privacy focus makes them somewhat of a laggard on AI and customization, which I think will be really important going ahead in a lot of the consumer electronics world. So if you if you say, okay, we're going to do what we can to like uh, shore up the base and, and let people have that, while we focus on the next generation of hot hardware, you look at healthcare, hardware really matters there because designing healthcare devices right now, the way they're built is really clunky. Um, it, it, it require I, so if if you think about bringing that's a place where they can own everything from hardware all the way to the software whole soup to nuts so if you look at it from that context i don't know if it's really apple getting services religion so much as it's like all right that market's pretty played out let's 
Let's sow the to seeds find new, of like uh, yeah. new territory. So right? you, it's, you it's see this as this is transitional. This is a way for them to yeah. get enough running room to find that next cost center. Basically, yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right. You guys are so good because I am like not good at editing myself and making it like <laughs> coherent. I love y'all. We're here to back you up, baby. <laughs> thank Actually, you. I'm I'm with you, Stacy. I, I can't get a word out at all. I don't. I can't talk today. But thank God. Sherilyn Lowe is here from Engadget. She is reviews editor there. Father Roberts visiting from the Vatican, where he has <laughs> brought, I don't know what, you bring some crackers and holy water? Yeah, I don't know about my us? bladder. Like it's How's your bladder? No, actually, I'm still, I'm 50%. You haven't, it hasn't, I, I it hasn't haven't, grown. I didn't drink any. I, did, can, I mean, I can, learned not to drink anything right before the show. Can we you water just to see what I happens? I want to see, like drink some water right during yeah, this break. Jeremy, can you fill up my thermos and I'll just <laughs> down this sucker? <laughs> we want to see how long it takes. <laughs> Great. Talk about privacy <laughs> invasions. Also, that's Stacy Higginbotham. She's a regular on This Week in Google. And, of course, the Stacy on IoT site, StacyOnIoT.com, and the great uh, IoT podcast she does with Kevin Toffel every week. Thank you, Stacy, for being here. All of you for being here. Uh, it's not, it is, see, Stacy, this is why I always surround myself with smart people, because they can always yeah. make sense out of the nonsense coming out of my mouth. So like thank blah, you. blah, blah. <laughs> so you mean this? Yes. Yes, that's that, it. That's a smart thing. Thank you. You and Jeff do that every Wednesday on uh, This Week in Google. That's, that's, mm. that's why you're there. Our show today brought to you by FreshBooks, the ridiculously easy-to-use cloud accounting system. Yeah, I said accounting, but really, you don't have to know any accounting to use FreshBooks. This is a great way to get your finances in shape. If you're a freelancer, a small business, it starts with sending out professional-looking invoices in seconds. You can always see which invoices have been paid, which have not, which are overdue, even which invoices have been viewed. So no more excuses from clients who say, oh, I didn't get your invoice. And clients will pay you faster, up to two times faster on average, because you can accept online payments directly from the invoice. That's magic. And in the process of creating invoices, you could put expenses in your invoice. Just take a picture of the receipt with your FreshBooks app on your phone. It'll go right into the invoice. In that process, it'll also, by the way, automatically connect to your bank account and update your expenses daily. In that process, you're doing accounting. You're getting all of the accounting, the true double entry accounting. They've, and that means you'll always know, am I making money? You'll be ready for tax time. The mobile app helps you keep tabs on your business no matter where you are. And, of course, because it's an online app, it's a FreshBooks dashboard, they're always adding new features. They've just added an accounting and reports tab in the nav bar. That means you can get easy access to the numbers that matter most to you. It is true double-entry accounting. You've got seven new features, including cost of goods sold. These are some of the reports you can get. Other income, general ledger, trial balance, charts of accounts, accountant access. That's really nice. Tax time's coming, and wouldn't it be nice just to say, hey, here's, here's all my information. You do the work. You can get your balance sheet anytime you need it. Also new, advanced payments. You can mark time as unbilled, revenue streams, and more. It's The nice thing about FreshBooks is it's in, immediately intuitive and easy to use. And as you use it, these features start to kick in. You get more and more benefit. Things like creating proposals with rich text content and images. Getting e-signatures from your clients. Yeah, that's one of the features of FreshBooks. I can go on and on. They have great support anytime you have a question. And Learning Hub videos, which make it very easy to learn new features. Look, stop using Word and Excel to do your billing. That's what I used to do. That's when I found FreshBooks. Now, it's been over 10 years since I started using FreshBooks. Make 2019 the year you start using FreshBooks. You can do it free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash twit. Freshbooks.com slash twit. If you do me a favor, though, put This Week in Tech in the How Did You Hear About Us section. That way we'll know. And they'll know, more importantly, that you heard it here. Freshbooks.com slash twit. We had fun this week, and I think we have, am I correct, a little mini movie. Thanks to Victor. Watch. Previously on Twit. Megan Maroney finished a workout. Mm -hmm. Megan Maroney finished a workout. You've already done two workouts today. I'm Apple glad Watch. you still get those alerts, because like you're not on social media. Do you get my alerts? Yeah, I usually just compare myself to you. Yeah, You've only and I, taken 413 steps. I just got up. <laughs> All about Android. We are super thrilled to welcome two folks from Palm. Well, everybody's very familiar with Palm as a brand name, mm -hmm. but yeah. we've talked about the Palm phone very recently with the kind of companion device. 
you can leave your phone behind and feel connected, but you're not necessarily consumed by it. And you have this software feature called Life Mode, where essentially it's like, do not disturb, just on automatically. So you have to physically enable yourself to be distracted. Tech News Weekly. According to an investigation from Motherboard this week, T-Mobile, AT&T, and Sprint are selling our real-time location data and it's ending up in the hands of bounty hunters who can easily geolocate our phones. Journalist Joseph Cox knows this to be true because he paid a bounty hunter to do it. They will use it to track down fugitives, um, find people who have skipped their bail. And I mean, they will, of course, argue that that is a legitimate purpose. But other people are going to disagree because there isn't consent necessarily being done there. Twit, coming to you from 38 degrees, 14 minutes north, 120 hey. degrees, 38 minutes west. You know that. <laughs> Jim Cutler <laughs> That's knows private data. How do you know that, Jim Cutler? Knows exactly where we are. Uh, a palm. Palm's still around. So, Father Robert, while you're consuming mass quantities of... It's spilling it on myself. Wah-wah. Oh, that, that you was You brought water? some other oh, interesting yeah. things, one of which was making your microphone buzz. Yeah. This is interesting. What is this? So, I stopped by the, the uh, Sands Innovation Center, and there was a company there called Powercast that does wireless power. Now, I, I know what you're thinking of wireless power. I've it's, always mocked it myself. It's chi, right? It's, right. okay, put it on the pad. No, this, this is, is, true. is actual... There's no battery on Through this. Through the air... This is so. This is just the, all this so you've is. You've got an, an LED, a little antenna with an LED on it, right? And as you get it closer, but not neck, but not on top of. On top of, right? So these are uh, what are called here, harvesters. It, move it. Can we, yeah, move let's this over here. We can get a camera this. shot of this. So this is the uh, this is the oh, it's light. There's nothing in this. Yeah, it's it's just broadcasting at 915 megahertz. So that's the same as RFID. It's not burning my hand and giving me uh, cancer. No, it? and this is like the super dumbed down version because they have the industrial version that, that can get you up to 20 so, feet. So this is lighting up because it's getting charged right now. Correct. So you're getting power through the air, through this antenna, into this little chip right here. That's an, a harvester. It's How harvesting close RF energy. Like a foot away? How close? Uh, so this one you can actually get about probably by five feet. Wow. As long as you pull it. How much properly. energy does it generate? Uh, you can I mean, transmit. How is this? this is doing one watt. You can transmit up to five watt according to spec. Wow. Right. Uh, but I mean, and, and five the, watt to how many feet? Uh, five with the industrial version, five watt to five to twenty feet. Okay. Right. So the uh, the idea behind this is pretty simple. Imagine all the devices that you have wow. that you only use occasionally. So from mice. To uh, console controllers, this is good to for key IoT fob, stuff. IoT stuff, right? As long as you're within range of one of these things, at some point during the day, you'll top off the battery. What uh, about interference with existing other radio? Well, it, it did, in fact, affect your microphone. Right. So if I get close to too close to this mic, well, not now. Well, I think it was more the wire, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, right there. I hear it right now. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm close enough to that to the the cable. Yeah, you'll you'll actually hear a little bit of tapping, but it's it's 915 megahertz, which you already have working in your house. Um, if you have anything that's RFID, you you've got 915 megahertz, and if you go outside, you're getting more radiation than you get from this. Uh, so I mean, it is FCC approved, so it doesn't interfere. It's not supposed to interfere with anything else. It hasn't been looked at by the FDA, so I wouldn't sleep on top of it. But it, the power levels are so low that it, it's not going to really be a health yeah. hazard. It's not ionizing. No, I'm just thinking about, so five watts at 20 feet. Uh, I'm trying to think about how much that would charge. So it'd be good for sensors. Not for phones. Definitely not mobile devices. Oh, yeah, no. Way no, I'm too not. much. Right. I'm just thinking about like Although the, the old uh, I... smartphone chargers were, were a few watts. Yeah. They weren't. Yeah. But I mean, I think, uh, you're, again, your console controllers. Imagine mm -hmm. never having to have, come back to a dead one. Your garage well, no, door opener, your remote control. Yeah, and I'm I'm thinking about like so. There's a lot of like. Don't put it in a studio. <laughs> <laughs> are you getting the buzz? computer yeah. vision chips that are like just basically like oh wake up this device that actually has power. So there's some interesting notification kind of options you could have with the sensor. Right. So okay. How yeah. much? Uh, so they're still kind of dev kitting it right now. So, so this so, isn't out yet. No, though it is out, but you can, you can get this one for something like $280. It's not cheap, but, uh, they, they've been doing mostly industrial. They're now trying to break into commercial and, and retail. Uh -huh. And I mean, the technology is it because is industrial cool. isn't paying them. I mean, no, why would you go from industrial to, cause there's a billion consumers. Yeah, yeah I know, but industrial people, they spend a lot of money and they're. They have real needs. 
I, I think it's Whereas, because they were able to tweak the, the, the technology while they were doing industrial. And now that they think okay. they have it to the point where they can drop the price probably like sub 100 at some point in the near future, this just becomes something that becomes table stakes. You, this gets built into your next smart desk or into your next monitor so that all you have to do is keep your devices, your keys near your monitor, and they're going to mm -hmm. get charged. Um, I mean, the spec is really, really good. And I love this technology. I mean, I've, I've already ordered a couple of the harvester chips from, um, from I think I got them from Aero uh, because they're, they're just a couple of cents each. And it's something that I can mm -hmm. play with on my, on my maker table. Uh, I mean, this is actual wireless power. This is not sci-fi. This is something that you can buy today and That's have cool. something charged up and powered without actually having a battery on it. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. I'll wait till the FDA weighs in. <laughs> or or I, I will sleep with this and then you can... <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if I'm dead in a year, then don't or buy it. Or just see if your bladder's full. Yeah, actually. Uh, <laughs> let's check. You've been drinking. It's still 50. I'm still at 50. Well, it, your kidneys are too slow. I'm not slow. dumping it straight you into my kidneys, bladder. my friend. I, I, yeah, I there's say. there's a filtration effect happening. Here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, by the end of the show, that'll probably be up to six or seven. So speaking of too much information, uh, yeah. the Intercept had the story, and I'm really curious what you think about this, Stacy. You remember Ring, uh, the Ring doorbell? What it was for many, uh, I think two or three years, a, a good strong yeah. sponsor. I have a Ring doorbell. I like Ring. I have to so say, I to Sam Biddle is not my favorite person in the world. He uh, used to work for Gawker, and he's frankly, I don't know if he's a very good reporter. So I wanted to get your take on this, Stacey. The, uh, let me give you the accusation, and then you can, you can respond. Yeah. They said in the process, starting in 2016, in the process of attempting to add uh, face recognition and other artificial intelligence features to ring cameras, they provided its Ukraine-based research and development team access to a bucket on Amazon's S3 that contained every video created by every Ring camera ever that the Ukrainian researchers were able to download and share the video files. And in fact, uh, he reports that uh, some of the team uh, <laughs> were sharing the files and laughing uh, as they saw people kissing and doing other things. Now, most of the Ring cameras I'm aware of are outdoor cameras. I guess Ring outdoor. does make some they indoor do cameras. They do make indoor cameras now. Um, I'm kind of glad I don't have an indoor camera. Ring says um, this came from the neighbor's feature of Ring, and these were videos that had been approved for sharing as a proactive neighbor would watch. That's not what Sam's implying. What's the what? What happened here? So there's two things to think about here. One is outdoor versus indoor camera. The other is if the neighbor's thing is accurate because the information a couple weeks ago reported that they did have security lapses and that unlike other companies that were doing cameras, Ring was pulling customer video for improving its AI. So Nest apparently does not do that, neither did Canary. Um, and then tie this to the fact that I had a conversation probably six months ago with a security firm who had just been hired by a large company that makes cameras to put in place retroactive security procedures because employees were getting access mm. or employees had access and were abusing their access mm. to people's camera fees. I don't know if it was Ring. I really did a lot of reporting trying to figure out who the heck that was. Right. Um, I never made it anywhere. So Ring's response was, we take the privacy and security of our customers' information seriously. In order to improve our service, we view and annotate certain Ring videos. These videos are sourced exclusively from publicly shared Ring videos from the Neighbors app in accordance with our terms of service and from a small fraction of Ring users who provided their explicit written consent to allow us to access and utilize their videos for such purposes. Furthermore, they say we have strict policies in place for team members. We implement systems to restrict and audit access to information, et cetera, et And cetera. they probably do now. What the information reported was this was happening in, what, 2016, yeah. I believe, 2016, 2017, yeah. which fits with the time frame that I had talked to some people about. Interesting. Um, and again, this also ties into you don't know what you're giving up when you sign some like yeah, it might be in their terms of service, but right. when you when Ring is like you're like, "Oh, I'm going to connect my doorbell." They're like, "Do you agree?" You're like, "Click. Moving on. Right. Connect to Wi-Fi." Biddle says that they don't in fact tell people even in the neighbors app that they may be showing their video to other people 
You the know, neighbors the, app, they do. They actually I mean, say, that's what you neighbor, upload it. They didn't say yeah, they'll get face recognition. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what the neighbors app does. In fact, I use the neighbors app and my neighbors do. And we can see people, you know, stealing packages and so forth. And it's actually very valuable. Uh, if if it's true, I apologize because we've been advertising Ring products for some time. I use Ring and uh, we didn't know this was happening. And for those of you who watch our shows who bought Ring cameras because of us, I, I apologize. Um, I had no knowledge of this. I hope that I hope it's not true. Um, you're right. Uh, Biddle says uh, Ring's spokesperson wouldn't answer any questions about the company's past data policies. Remember, Ring was purchased by Amazon and is now an Amazon company. So maybe Amazon changed the policies, maybe not. Mm, Jamie Siminoff, who I have known for years. The founder of Ring. The founder of Ring. Um it did not surprise me that they did not have policies in place for this. Uh, Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt because we have an urgent, <laughs> urgent. Whoa, what just happened? Well, I, Jammerby gave me a liter of water. Uh, go ahead, Robert. You, you right have back. my permission to. He's reached it works. a perfect 10. Wait, wait. Does Is he there, really have does to it go? Does it go to 11? Yeah, like when it was at nine, did that work? Did you uh, like, uh, he's gone. when do you feel it? Uh, wow. I know. I want to know. I have so many questions. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. So I feel bad. And, uh, you know, I thought, I think I like Jamie. I've talked to Jamie. Um, he was a fan of Twit. That's why his ads were on Twit. Um, uh, this kind of thing can't happen. But I think it, it, increasingly in this, in this world, we're going to have to, companies like Ring are going to have to pay stricter attention to their own practices. And I guess it's something you've always talked about, Stacey, it behooves us to make sure that uh, our, our, you know, if we, we put a camera in, that they've got good privacy policy in place. Well, and it's not, I mean, in the case of good privacy policies, you still are trusting the company you that has your to. data. You always so have like, to. So yeah. like from the time that, remember that New York Times reporter who did the review on Tesla <laughs> and Tesla like freaked out and sent like all the data from his right. like review trip? I've always been very cognizant of that for any connected device in my home, yeah. not just as a reviewer, but just as like a person. I'm like, if a company gets frustrated with me, they can just pull whatever connected data from any device and broadcast yeah. it or their employees could. Yikes. And I, I, I mean, that's how I think about things because yeah. I'm paranoid and weird. Yeah, we may. Uh, I have cameras in a lot of places, including in my car. And of course, I drive a Tesla and I know for a fact because I've we had a problem early on with the Tesla uh, where uh, Lisa and I thought it was going for, forwards when we had the car in reverse. And I called them and they said, no, no, the, according to the log, you had the, you had the car in forward. Oh, you know what? Here's a secret tip for your <laughs> that Tesla. That was kind of a shock. Your... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or even your tip. So wait, just hit the mic button whenever anything weird happens in your car and just say bug report and it yes. sends it automatically I over. did know about that. Uh, okay. I found out about that later. I thought that was cool. But they know everything. They log everything, everything you do oh, in yeah. that car. And then I have an OWL dash cam, which is also uploading videos. Uh, oh, my God. I'm just so screwed. Wait, you just told people that you've got a spot, an Amazon spot in your bedroom. And you're like, no, yeah, it's, it's not fine. in my bedroom. Oh, it's no, in Lisa my closet. Because Lisa won't allow it in the bedroom. It is in the closet, though. <laughs> I have a Google Home Mini in my bathroom. I know. I mean, I have two Sherman, of these Facebook you portals. Okay, no, that's a step too far. But Sherilyn, do you have a, a mini or anything in your bathroom? I'm just curious. Uh oh, we lost her. She disappeared. She oh. went to turn off all her ring cameras. <laughs> it's like uh. she literally. But I guess when I guess when Robert ran out, she she, she had a similar crisis. So. <laughs> I have my attitude on all this has really changed dramatically. For a long time, I was, eh, I don't care. I, they can have video, whatever. But I'm starting to worry. There seems to be a widespread desire to collect every bit of information about everybody. Well, there's that, and then once it's there, it's searchable forever to anybody. And you raise a good anybody. point. If a company decided, you know, if Tesla decided, oh, we don't like Leo's coverage, you know, they've got all sorts of stuff they could release about me. I don't know what you're doing in your car. I don't nothing, want to know. Nothing that Tesla knows about. Welcome back, Sherlyn. <laughs> did you did you have a call? You don't have a, a, a app on your phone 
I was like, don't ask her if she uh, went to the okay. bathroom. Come on, so, man. I got to ask Robert, though. As it was approaching 10, did you feel increased urgency? Uh, yeah. Is it fairly, so it's fairly accurate? It's re actually really accurate. I mean, it's, so that was fast, though. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, because it was at six, five, six, seven, and then Jammerby gave me a liter of water, and I drank the whole thing during the ad break. And that, oh, okay. that will spike it pretty quickly. Yeah. <sighs> I'm back. And actually, there's, there is another uh, use of that, which is if you stay at, like, four to six... For five or six hours, you're dehydrated. You're dehydrated. Yeah. You you actually go huh. need need to go drink some water. Well, I was thinking about using it for like if you're planning a road trip, you could like empty and then drink strategically along oh, the way. So yeah. you don't have to make strategic as many stops. drinking. This could be a new mm. esport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That's another place where this could be. You that's know, right. actually, this could go on the status screen of every esport streamer. Oh, see, that gets into right. that competitive no lower, information. Lower kind of. corner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, let me do one more uh, ad, and then when we come back, uh, f final words. Some, some. There's lots of little stories I'm going to rip through and, and talk about. Uh, but uh, first, a word from IT Pro TV. We love IT Pro TV. They kind of were born on this network. When Tim and Don started IT Pro TV, they were uh, IT trainers, and they thought, you know, we should do kind of what, Tech TV did what Twit did, which is stream live IT training. People could watch wherever they are in the convenience of their own home, get on demand stuff, and they could get a job in IT or get better skills in IT. IT Pro TV was born in a minute. It has grown like crazy. I was about a year ago, Lisa and I went out to the grand opening of their new Gainesville Studios, five studios. They're now all recording live. You can watch them record live, join the chat room, and then, of course, They've got 4,000 hours now in their library, binge-worthy on-demand training for every area of IT, from CompTIA to Cisco, EC Council. They do those certified ethical hacker certs that I really would like to get. VMware. The hosts, people like Don and Ronnie Wong and Cherokee Booz, are, are fabulous. They present information in a talk show format. They're live every day. Content goes studio to web in 24 hours, so it's always fresh. And you can watch it on your browser, of course, and on your phone. They have iOS and Android apps, but also Chromecast it to your TV. Roku, they have a great Roku app, Amazon Fire TV app, an Apple TV app. So once you're getting in there, man, you could you could get up in the morning, you could have IT Pro TV on while you eat breakfast, listen to it in the car on the way to work, have it running in a window, and you can get great skills that are get, going to get you a better job. This is the category right now for jobs is IT. Your Those IT skills are gold. 2019 is a perfect time for you to start a new career in IT or get the cert you've been missing or, you know what, just learn. It's fun. Visit go.itpro.tv slash twit. That's go.itpro.tv slash twit and you can get started with IT Pro TV. They have a sale on that is remarkable. Uh, this is their biggest sale ever. Their video only subscription, which is a standard membership, that's normally $57, currently on sale on the site at $29 a month, which I, I think is an amazing deal. But if you use the offer code TWIT30, you'll save an additional 30%. That means you can jumpstart your career or advance it for about $20 a month. That's so much, like, even in the, the study materials for those certs, let alone a class or a technical college, this is a great deal. And if you're the kind of person that, gets this kind of information by watching it. It's there's just no better way. Go.itpro.tv slash twit. Don't forget twit 30 will give you 30% off. If you've been putting it off, this is there's no better time. I know you've heard of us talk about it. Now's the time. IT Pro TV, flexible training, binge worthy content, and life changing results. You're gonna love it. Visit go.itpro.tv slash twit and use the promo code twit thirty. Chromecast audio is being discontinued. What is wrong with Google? They just the, turn stuff off at the drop of a hat. Well, no, the, this nuts. this is their lineage because remember when they started, they they were big on the spaghetti model: throw everything up against the wall and right. see what sticks. Which is great when you're a startup. Not so great when you've been around for you know more than a decade and most of the world depends on you. I guess we knew this was happening because you could buy one for fifteen bucks. All right. I think you still can if you shop around. And I don't see any reason not to get one. No, they still work. They still work. They They're great for audio. They hook them up to a speaker. They have optical and analog in. 
I mean, out. Uh, they uh, work on Wi-Fi, and they do, gr I think, really good audio. I think it's a great little product. I mean, they've got someone at Google right now who's looking at the expansive it's Ruth service Porat, the and new product CFO. line, right, yeah. and saying, this is stupid, guys. Yeah. What, why are we doing this? Yeah. Uh, they, they have the same problem that Apple had uh, on the return of jobs when he said, why do we have 67 lines? It doesn't make sense. We should have four. <sighs> Tim Cook says revenue for Apple's wearables is 50% higher than the iPod at its height. Which is still way less than what it needs to be. When but I don't get iPod. it. I mean, it's, they say, he said that uh, this was the interview uh, that he gave with CNBC. Is that Jim Cramer? Wow. I wonder if he brought his buy button. Uh, you know, actually, I was watching Jim Cramer in the, uh, more serious, the press room the other day. Yeah. And what scares me is he's saying a lot of the exact same things and making the exact same jokes that he did before the last <laughs> crash. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I know, I, I'm, I'm kidding you not because I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait a minute. He's making fun of the people who are, are scared of the market right now. It's like the last time he did this was when he was incredibly wrong and he uh, lost his audience a lot of money. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Oh. Uh, I, yeah. Okay. Um, By the way, can I suggest a uh, an an app tweak for them? Yeah. If they were to integrate this with Google Maps, so that when you knew I'm where driving, the bathroom was, when I'm driving, it would say, "Hey, yeah. you need this bathroom because you won't make it to the next one." That would be awesome. Please do that. Then I don't have Ooh, to drive at 120 miles. That's an hour. way more than me doing strate like strategic See? planning on my end. It's AI. <laughs> my, my phone saying, hey, you're probably going to want to stop at this Union 76 because that's the last clean bathroom because Google Maps also rates bathrooms uh, for the Do next really? 50 miles. Yeah. There's an integrated, there's a layer where they've rated bathrooms, wow. publicly accessible bathrooms. Are you kidding? I'm not. That's kidding. amazeballs. Yeah. How did I miss that? <laughs> Amazon, due to Apple's drop in value, is now the most valuable company. Very first time, the most valuable they, yeah, company. They leapfrogged in Microsoft. the U.S. They leapfrogged Microsoft. Apple. Uh, I mean, it didn't take much. You only had to be eight hundred billion. You know, it's not a not you know. Um, Although half of that, that might be going somewhere else. Yeah, that was bad timing because right after that, uh, Jeff it's Bezos uh, tweeted that he and Mackenzie, after twenty five years of marriage, are are getting divorced. Uh, Jeff has. Maybe not the best no. midlife crisis girlfriend ever. She's been releasing their texts. Oops. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. That's more celebrity gossip. Than it, is, it, is. it is because, okay, from what I, 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 I didn't really pay attention to the story. But no, I tried They were to on too. a break and yep. they were trying to patch things up. And obviously that didn't work out. And he's kind of owning it, and she's kind of owning it. And I'm thinking, they're he's saying a, we're going to be friends. We would do it all over again. Says, they have kids. Yeah. Um, it, it feels like the press really wants to like, they really want to cover this. So they're trying, yeah. like, even like the Wall Street Journal's like, uh, this is there's an ownership issue. Well, in there is. Shares. There's a financial and there story because uh, she. By the way, yeah. she deserves absolutely half the she, company. She, she was with him before Amazon. That's right, and, and would helped considerably with the creation mm -hmm. of Amazon and. So now that'll dilute uh, Jeff's shares to down to what nine percent. So that I don't I'm know. Not crying of huge rivers there. No. So <laughs> I feel like that is a legitimate story. It you is. can report that, yes. but I feel like a lot of the stories, like ah, divorce, and I know, ah, I know. look how they control the story. Ah, he's I sleeping know. with this woman. Ah, he sent dick pics. And ah. and, and good on him Financial. or his PR person when he said. Okay. Yes. No. This is something you can report on. It's 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 you know public knowledge. It is it's good for people to understand. He, did, he what's wrote going a very on. I thought an eloquent uh, and, right. and well said tweet. When did Twitter become the place people announce <laughs> things? This is so depressing to me. Well, he realizes he could be dragged over the coals, and either he he controls the narrative or he yeah, lets someone. That's else him. Do. Yeah, controlling it because otherwise someone would have picked it up in yep. courts, yeah, and yeah. then they would have said. Yep. Oh! Uh, you saw it in our uh, promo. Uh, pretty good story from Motherboard, revealing that AT and T, T Mobile, and Sprint had all been kind of selling location data without a lot of protections, and it was getting out into the third-party market. Um, unauthorized. Wait, I'm sorry, 
Go ahead. Were people, did, was the lead story that people were driving blindfold for the bird box challenge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just saw, I was like, no. That is, did that did is I not miss something there? He scrolled fast. Mm-hmm. Driving blindfolded for the bird box <laughs> challenge. Just don't, <laughs> officials say. That is hard hitting reporting. I'm sorry. First, I what's wrong with kids it. today? First, they eat Tide Pods. Now they try to blindfold and drive. A teenager okay, from Utah okay, decided I, I, to cover her eyes and drive a pickup truck. The latest yet, police say, in another online craze. This feels like film at 11. No, this feels it's, like it's Channel 4 News. People. In another it's, online craze, it seems to inspire reckless behavior. I this, don't have Netflix in Italy, so what is Bird Box? I keep hearing this. It's a thing. It's a, it's a Sandra Bullock movie. Uh, it's post apocalyptic, and it's her and a couple of kids trying to escape to a safe zone. But they, you know, if they look at something that triggers a bout of depression, they might commit, like, be driven to kill themselves. And that's the premise of the movie. I, I would just started watching actually uh, a third of it before this interview. Oh, <laughs> so, so you don't know what happens. So, so basically, yet. this is about to, a of bunch it. of people who are trying not to look at Twitter. Sure. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Um, I got it. It Sorry. does sound to me like The Quiet Place. It is The Quiet <laughs> Place. It's Except the quiet for instead place, of covering the ears. So this is the, this is the Dark Place. Is that that's, is the next is the next one going to be Don't Smell Anything <laughs> and they all walk around with clothes pins on their nose? I don't know. Don't touch anything. Ah. That, that's actually close to life because you could have, you know, gas, uh, sarin or... <laughs> yeah, true. Drug, don't yeah. breathe. Don't breathe. Leo, you just wrote Scary Movie 6 or 7. <laughs> the film has become a hit. More than 45 million Netflix subscribers watched it within the first re- week of its release. Well, th- does that make it a hit or does that just mean, eh, yeah, look, this is new. Let me click it. Okay. Here's the problem. Netflix revealed that last year it made 1,500 new movies and TV shows. 1,500. You'd have to watch four shows a I day not watch <laughs> to keep up with what Netflix is cranking out. I only watch their Adam Sandler stuff because that's high quality. Basically, <laughs> a, 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 keeping up with Netflix is a part-time job. <laughs> Crazy. In fact, this story, where was that story from? It had featured pictures of two of my favorite actors... In okay, wait, wait, what, what short was this, or what Netflix? This was Maniac. a Netflix Maniac. It's but so good, you need. I to watch didn't it. know. I, yeah. I don't have Netflix. Who is that? Se- is that Seth Rogen? I confused Jonah, him with Zach Galifianakis. Jonah Hill. It's Jonah, Jonah, Hill. Jonah Hill and Emma. That's like skinny Emma Jonah Stone. Hill. Skinny Jonah Hill, no beard. Emma Stone, and I didn't even know they did something on Netflix. I, I, uh, okay. And, I'm and sorry, actually, I told her. You know that new the the uh, new um, heart and uh, well, what's the guy from from Breaking Bad? They have a new movie. Brian out. Cranston. Brian Cranston. I actually thought that was like an Amazon or a Netflix original because the advertising in Italy was very vague about that. So I thought, oh, how well, do you say Netflix in Italian? Uh, Netflix. <laughs> They to no, don't joke. I met a couple of Italians, New Jersey Italians at CES, yeah. and they found out that I was living in Rome. And they go, "Oh, you must love all the mozzarella." I'm like, "The what? mozzarella?" So oh, you get really fresh the mozzarella. I'm like, "I." You that's mean mozzarella? That's, a, that's no, no, Jersey no. Mozzarella Italian. is the Italian word. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's, <Mozzarella>. it's not. <laughs> mozzarella um, is the Italian. So word. So part of the reason that the bird box challenge is big, besides the fact that YouTube exists. Yeah, okay. Is that Jake Paul did it? Oh, okay, no. driving in uh, and walking no. across a busy oh, Los Angeles so, street while blindfolded. On, man, what is wrong with people? Why are people still paying attention to him? The video has been removed <sighs> for violating YouTube's policy that permits prohibits not permits stupid prohibits things? promoting dangerous activities yeah. like planking. Oh. You can't do planking on YouTube. Please do not hurt yourself with the bird box challenge. Actually, you'll see that. When, when you watch Bird Box now, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't wow. understand. Okay. okay, I'm so sorry. No, that I'm I glad you derailed very me. Very serious. Uh, it's, no, who cares? I asked, I asked. Who cares? No, 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 no. <clears throat> actually, actually, AT and T tracking your location and the cell phone carriers selling your data is way more important yeah, than and a Bird Box. It's par now. for the course. I'd rather find out about the Bird Box <laughs> challenge. So I just. Yeah, yeah, AT&T says, okay, we're going to stop sometime later this year. T-Mobile and Sprint said, yeah, yeah, we'll knock it off. Verizon apparently is not involved only because they got caught doing this earlier. Right. <laughs> and <Yeah>. stopped. <laughs> so, uh, 
I don't know what. Isn't it funny that if Verizon got caught and stopped, that the other three waited until like now? Right. Well, it this must, is the new it must thing. have been very lucrative. This is the Mark yeah. Zuckerberg way. Yeah. Wait until you get caught, then apologize, then do something else. This is, is it the Zuck way or is it the Travis Kalanick uh, the Kalanick way? way? It's the it's the <laughs> tech the tech way, the Silicon Valley way. It's the way you know what. It's how Washington D.C. is run. It's how everything this country. The idea of integrity has gone down the tubes. Wait, it, it, wait, no, it's even before that. I mean, come on. How old is that saying it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission? Yeah, but they've, we they've that weaponized the this. They've made it. They've made it. Well, and the carriers, to their credit, know that they've got the friendliest FCC commissioner yeah, in right. since. Now's the time. Now's the time. Michael Cops. If you're going to try stuff. And I mean, we're not time. even, no not one's Michael. even talking about Michael the fact Powell. that we're still Powell. using Powell. thousands of boot boxes <laughs> across the United States. Opposite of that. Easy, easy to confuse. Um, I don't want you to know about this, so pay no attention to the fact that there is now an ad blocker for podcasts. <laughs> Adblockradio.com. So it's just. You have to listen so through silence? the podcast through that? I don't know. Yeah, what happens? I don't know how That's it works. Weird. Oh, he's trying to get people to integrate it into their player. It works with radio. Um, okay. And he's got these strategies for detecting ads. I, I I'm pretty sure that's not going to work on our on ours. No, because I weave right. the ads into the fabric of the show, so you don't know. Well, that's old timey TV when they used to actually yeah. have it in the show. Like yeah. Lucy would take out the bottle okay, of. Okay, that is current TV. When Dell sponsors an entire detect, you're like, right. oh, look, they're all on they're Dell. All using Dell's, <laughs> yeah. What was it? Was it Breaking Bad where they're all using Windows Phone well into the past the demise of the Windows Phone? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Mindy it? Kaling's show, whatever that had it in there too. And yeah. I was like, oh. Isn't cute. that silly? Isn't that cute? My, uh, Microsoft Surface and the NFL. Yeah. And their biggest, or as we call them, iPads. That's right. Their, their biggest moment was when, what was it? It was one of the quarterbacks, I think the Jets, he snapped his in half because he got so frustrated. <laughs> and Belenikov, I think, uh, threw his. Yeah. 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 But that, you know, he throws whatever he can get. Um, I think we can, oh, hey, I didn't see this, but I gather at the VLC booth. Yes. At CES. Love those hats. They had uh, a counter, which was kind of a funny counter because it's a bunch of tablets. And they hit 3 billion downloads at CES. I don't know if that's real or not, because that's kind of coincidental timing. But still, who it doesn't use VLC? Me. Yeah, I mean, that VLC is the best. I mean, the, the, the best example of open source working well. You know what we didn't talk about all through the show? What? Was there any VR at CES? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there was... Uh, an MR headset that was one of our um, best offs. Oh, it was from a startup. It's called Unreal, and they basically did what the uh, those sort of look like kind of cool. It, that yeah. that was augmented reality. That was, I think, it might be AR or XR, um, yeah. not full VR, but it looked a lot like the Willy Wonka glasses, I guess. Yeah, they looked and, really uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, not so at there all was nerdy. Some. Uh, that picture is a nice picture. <laughs> oh, they don't look quite that nice. <laughs> and I, I was actually a fan of the um, uh, display link technology. So their XR technology allows you to take uh, any. Oh, you're any, right. They're a little more VR nerdy. When, make it completely wireless. <laughs> when when you put Richard in them, <laughs> they get a, a little bit more nerdy. Yeah. Yeah, just a tad. Yeah. I I can't really do 3D right now because I have a cataract in my right eye. So oh, I'm it, sorry. It just looks. It just makes me sick. Uh, so this is augmented or X, X, X reality or augmented reality more than it is virtual reality, right? Yeah. Mm. I think the play with VR now is content. I think that the hardware is more or less, we've we've sort of reached the stage where they're more or less going to be about where they are. Um, there are still advances to be made, of course, but I don't think CES is the show they're going to bring it to anymore. Yeah. We're looking at content, so there'll be maybe Tribeca's... Um, VR arm of the film festival, as well as E3. We're going to see maybe new hardware as well as content for VR. So probably for the best that CES was a bit quiet on the VR front. VR has gone the way of 3D TV myself, but we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys are so good. I am so glad you were here. Stacey Higginbotham Botham is the uh, host of the IoT podcast with Kevin Toffel. Her website, StaceyOnIoT.com, is a must-visit and her newsletter, a must-subscribe for anybody interested in IoT.
And we are so graced by her presence every Wednesday on This Week in Google. Will you be back on Wednesday? I will be. We missed you because you were at CES. Look forward to it. Sherilyn Lowe, you catch her work at Engadget. She's reviews editor there, which is a big job if you think about it. <laughs> Uh, what do you? So you're done with CES, or do you have to file a few more stories? I have filed my last story. It should be going up tomorrow. I'm really excited about this one too. So stay tuned. I'll tweet it out. Good. Um, and then, of course, it, it's the Bird Box challenge for you. <laughs> can you can you blind file blindfolded? Can you I write will go to gadgets? bed blindfolded. <laughs> Good. There is a safe challenge. There you go. That's a safe one, Sherlyn. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank and you for having me, Father Robert. He's back to three. On the P level. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, Robert, it. We, I miss you so much. I'm so glad that you at least get a little bit of time to visit and went to CES and then came back and reported. And like uh, I said, anytime I come back, of course, I'm going to try to make it up to the studio. That's please. Just, that's my thing. We miss you so much. He's the digital Jesuit. Is there... You're still tweeting, right? I'm still tweeting, and actually, that would be the best place to find uh, what I'm going to be doing. I The studio, the Studio A is done. So you said you were going to build a studio at the Vatican. Right. So Studio A, which is where we're going to be doing most of the stand-ups, just the sort of the static shots, that's done. So I can start doing product reviews. Studio B, which is on the roof overlooking St. Peter's, that's going to be my streaming studio. That's probably going to take a couple more weeks to get done. Yeah. What is this uh, picture? This is this is cool. No, that's from uh, Brazil. That Are was you in this thing. picture? This uh, no, no, I'm taking the picture. Oh. This is when the Holy Father visited yes, uh, Brazil. Yes, that's, that's when we did the World Youth Day down. In fact, we're going to be doing that next week down in Panama. Uh, so I, you're going to see me traveling around a lot. Unfortunately, is it fun? Are you having fun? I, I, I mean, it's different. It's different work. I do miss what I used to do, but I mean, this is my vocation, and they've asked me to do it. So of course, I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah. And we found out no one can fill your shoes at know how. We had to just kill the show because <laughs> without Father Robert, there is no no. Well, yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, unfortunately, that happens a lot, right? I mean, yeah. would we have a tech guy without you? It's it, it, people follow for the personalities. They yeah, for the people. I think that's always true about, yeah. especially the kinds of podcasts we do. It's it's as much about the people as it is about the content. Yeah, right. But please come back anytime. Every chance we I always get, love Leo. having you. Uh, at Padre S J on Twitter, P A D R E S. The, when Jay. I do, probably the next time I come by, there will be a more specific URL because I am Padres Corner is officially coming back. Oh, good! I do have permission to. Do really that. glad to hear that. That was always a fun show. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we do this show every Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 2300 UTC. We'd love it if you stop by. We had a great studio audience. Luis and Luisa were here. Michael from Brisbane, Australia. Kyle and Michelle from Philly. Thank you all for coming. Did I get everybody? Uh, if you want to be in studio, we will love to host you. All you have to do is email tickets at twit.tv. There's no charge. But you do have to be in the Petaluma, California area, about an hour north of San Francisco. Just email us and we'll, uh, we'll put a seat out for you. You can also watch the show live on a live stream because at twit.tv slash live, we have both audio and video. And if you do that, the party is going on at irc.twit.tv, our chat room where all the people watching live gather together to heckle me. <laughs> Actually, today, to give me some of my best lines, and I thank you. I've been stealing your jokes pretty much throughout they're the show. They're good people. They're, good. they're my oh, writers. Is, is that where they're coming from? Uh -huh. You were definitely on your game this time. No, no, thanks to the chat room, honestly. <laughs> uh, if you can't watch live or be here live, on-demand audio and video for everything we do, of course, it's a podcast. It's available for download either from our website, twit.tv, or find This Week in Tech in your favorite uh, podcast program, and you can subscribe to it, and you'll get it the minute it's available a Sunday evening for your Monday morning uh, commute. And we appreciate it if you subscribe. Uh, don't forget, your voice assistant can also play episodes of all of our shows. Just say, hey, you, uh, play This Week in Tech podcast, or This Week in Google podcast, or the Tech Guy podcast, and you'll get the most recent episode. And you can listen to our live stream that way, too. Play Twit Live, and... That way you'll get the live stream. So uh, that's another great way to listen. I think that more and more people are going to start listening that way. It's one of the reasons I like these uh, voice assistants. It makes it very easy to listen to podcasts. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Another twist. It's, it's in the can. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>